Wow. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to start this review by apologizing to Tony Khan and by apologizing to all the wrestlers who are still performing during a pandemic. I'm also going to start this review by telling you the things I liked about this show right away so that we get the happy thoughts out in the open. I still... I cannot I can't even believe that we just saw that. I mean, bro, was the, I thought the, I thought it was done on purpose. I thought any minute the commentators were going to come on and say like you didn't think they would actually blow up the entire ring, did you? Like I mean you couldn't have gotten any funnier than saying the whole place was going to go up and then at the end sparklers went off. And I shit you not sparklers went off. And then Eddie Kingston coming in to save, I mean, man, that was a literal representation of the entire night tonight at AEW. Wow. I mean, this was the, the biggest failure that AEW has ever had. This was such a terrible night. All around a horrible night of, of just everything. We are going to... We are going to be talking about this for days to come, but not the way that AEW wanted us to. J I mean... So, this was the best match of the night, in my opinion. The ending was a botch, obviously. Didn't even know that... I didn't even realize it was a botch until it finally ended, and I went, oh, that was really... Okay. They're really selling it like he blew up, but he didn't come close to blowing up. Okay. So... Jim, uh, the positives are Don Callis is gold on commentary. That match was fun when the explosions were going off. And unfortunately, it was, in my opinion, the best match of the night, but only because it was interesting. I was like, what's going to happen? It's so crazy. It's so interesting. But, like, the bar had been lowered so low that what I was hoping for was I was hoping that this night was going to be a 7 out of 10 until we got to the main event and that match was going to be so good it was going to bring the show to an 8 or a 9. And maybe the big announcement of the signing of the big wrestler name was going to be so hot too that that would bump things up as well as excitement. Literally none of it happened. None of it happened. I can't believe that none of it happened. I am shocked. None of it happened. I, 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 I am so shocked. This is the worst night that AEW has ever had. This is the most oversold pay-per-view I've seen in a long time. They oversold the hell out of this. A big name superstar is coming who's a future Hall of Famer. Wow, it's Christian Cage. What, Edge's sidekick? I mean, dude, this is embarrassing. I, I, I once again, I apologize to all the wrestlers, and to and to and, and to Tony Khan and AEW. You know, but you know what? They're not going to hire me either. No one's going to hire me. So, I don't even care. I don't give a damn. I'm never going to get to do what I want to do. This was absolutely trash absolutely fucking trash tonight absolutely fucking trash Christian is barely more any just like I don't even like Edge that much I'm not even a big Edge fan kind of bores me Christian even more bores me wow let's bring in Jake DeMarco who looks like he wants to kill himself as well right now and, yeah, uh, I can't believe I'm so over for this. My God, I, I, it's not a talent problem, Joe. It's not a talent problem. That's for sure. It's not their talent at all. They have a, a really good roster. And I actually, people, you know, all the time, I, I'm criticizing a lot tonight, but there wasn't much good. I'm sorry. There really wasn't. I was excited for this. I was excited for the card. They sold me on the 
damn landmine match. That was ridiculous. You know what that reminds me of? When you really like a movie that's, you know, 30 years old, but it doesn't hold up today. That's the idea. Kenny Omega loves that barbed wire explosive death match that he used to watch in the early 90s. So he's like, we're going to do that, but it doesn't hold up. That was pathetic. That was embarrassing. And I feel terrible for everyone involved in that, except for Bryce Remsburg, who apparently works for the CDC during the weekdays. That was ridiculous. Everything about that was awful. And it's not. It's not. Well, I don't Kenny agree with that. Fault. I don't agree with it's, that. It's I, thought, I thought the match. Fault. I thought the match was fine, but the problem is the match was not bad. The ending was all terrible. Of, all of the production value that went into it was bad. All of all of the extra stuff that the wrestlers didn't have control over looked piss poor. Just like I said to begin with, they sold it as actual landmines. They talked themselves up. What they delivered was a joke. You could get that for a hundred bucks at a hardware store, Joe. You and I could put on something better with fireworks that we can get at a Walmart right now. They really did oversell everything. Like if everything. this was their biggest problem is a hype problem. The, WWE tends to shoot themselves in the foot. This, this was, was insanity. This was they the have higher gone power. on all week. If Christian, if lights went out and Christian came out, or if he was in the ladder match, or if everyone would be cheering, it wouldn't be you. Even you and I would be like, "Oh, Christian, that's pretty cool." But yeah, because we would. they set up such high expectations, they made everyone go all week go out of their goddamn mind. Who could it be? No one's even talked really for months now about CM Punk or Lesnar. You hear Lesnar's not going to be at, at WrestleMania so far. You're like, ah, well, shit. They put these ideas in your head to to go ahead and get people to, to tune in, and then they let them down. Finally, we got a refund chant started at an AEW show. You know, we, we've heard AEW chanted at WWE shows. It's kind of the opposite tonight. Sadly, this show could have been excellent. It did not live up to any expectations at all and that is their fault they set themselves up for failure by setting the bar so high for an epic uh hall of fame worthy you know announcement this signee is going to be huge at least all right bright side christian can still go we've seen but we just saw him at the rumble so it's not like it's this huge unveiling of someone we haven't seen in ages well, you know it was cool to see carlito because we hadn't seen him in what 10 years it felt like something like that but it's Christian's a, a top of the line mid Carter. You know, he was really good. They made it obvious by using his TNA theme, but I, I mean, there just it, there wasn't much there. There really wasn't. It, it, it's Christian. They made people think Brock friggin' Lesnar was showing up or CM Punk. I'm just I'm blown away and baffled by by all of the decisions and booking and, and so many questions tonight of how they set things up. That ladder match was not good. No. It should have been. The talent in there is excellent. But the way they had them booked to do spot after spot, you have people standing around looking like drunken idiots waiting to be hit by a move that they shouldn't be standing there for. I know that's a problem with wrestling. What as a, a whole fucking now. trash show tonight. I mean, I can't I dude, I can't even believe this. Are you listening, Tony Khan, since you won't hire me, you fucking rich fuckhead? Like, and everybody else in your fucking company, they fucking sold the fuck out of this for a fucking goddamn fucking month. Oh, my God. The ring's going to blow up. Oh, my God. People could die. We're like, oh, Moxley's going to be left for dead. What's he going to go away now? What, because he landed in some barbed wire? I, I guess they could sell the injuries. Like, they, they should have called an audible. As soon as, as soon as Eddie saw the pyro didn't go off there, fuck this I don't know shit. if he saw it, though. I honestly don't know if he saw it because he had his head covered. So he might not know. And poor Eddie had to sell it like he just got blown up by a fucking nuke, even though he barely got tickled by leaning over the hot stove. Wow, that Christian was insulting. Cage. Jay, Christian Cage is here. Oh, my God. Oh, don't forget. He's, he's going to outwork everybody. Wow. He's the big oh surprise. Oh, my God. The peeps are here. The fucking, the fucking side comedy act from WWE ECW champions here. The guy who does like five moves. We've already I, got big money, Matt and Sting. We I can't well wait for Christian Cage. Roster. Oh, look Archer. out. Wow. Like, dude, Christian Cage sucks. This fucking it's, show. It's, it's we're watching it, TNA, but they're 10 years older. I, I like Christian, too. Like, it's not like I, I'm not insulted that he's here, but he's just he's not a big surprise. He's not this big name. Big Show is a bigger name. Paul White is a better signee than this guy. Yes, that's the thing. That's exactly what I said. Christian, they should have had Christian introduce superstar. Paul White. Yes, that Christian, was more of a surprise. Yes, it's the Big Show's here. Christian is not as big as Paul fucking White. He's not as big as Paul fucking White. He's <laughs> Literally fucking, and figuratively. He's not fucking as big. You fucking motherfucking Paul fucking White. You fuck. They just don't get it. You I Jacksonville fucking jackass. 
Don Callis was the only good one on commentary tonight. JR sounded like he was dying all night. Give the man off. Is he suffering from COVID? Jesus, he sounds like he's got strep throat in Get JR the fuck out of there. You know what, JR? You haven't retweeted one of my tweets for two years. Hey, check out my commentary. Hey, check out my commentary. Oh, sorry, Joe. I'm just too busy. <laughs> hey, uh, Tony Schiavone, what do you think about tonight? Uh, I'm just a fucking happy to be here not serving Starbucks. Oh, I'm just happy I'm not serving Starbucks. Uh and then you got Excalibur with his fucking mask on, looks like a fucking stupid fuck idiot. Dude, that's it. Now it's fucking on, Tony, Mr. Billionaire. You fucking waste of shit. All week, a big superstar is coming. If you look into my eyes and you think they fear, I sucked in every company here. If that guy wasn't in the WWE during the hottest time in all of wrestling, Nobody would know who the fuck he is. I said it. Let's shoot on this shit and take the respect out of it because I I can't do it. I'm sorry. If they brought in fucking Christian out of nowhere, it would have been fun. And I would have been had like, the lights nice out every week, guy. it seemed like, for weeks on end. That's their favorite trope. Oh, Darby Allen's going to appear. Oh, Cody's got to come back in with black hair now instead of white. You know, it's like, oh, Jesus. We didn't... Lights out, lights out. But now they have the opportunity to genuinely surprise you with someone, and they don't do it. Why? Why don't you go through with the surprises when they're meaningful? I, I, Instead, I, you I have sparklers blow up Eddie Kingston when he finally turns face. Dude, sparklers went off. I can't. Like, dude, that was the cherry on top of this whole show. The ring's going to blow up. They're going to die. The whole place is going to go up. Oh, no. Three, two, one. Oh, my God. Like, and it wasn't. I, I kept expecting the commentary team to be like, Oh, you got to be kidding me. They played us this whole time with that? Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. That's it. It was a joke. I thought it was a joke. I was like, that's actually funny. I actually said, like, that's actually hilarious. And if JR had been like, well, folks, we're being told that... They were able to turn it off, and and that, and then and then no, no, they just could have said that Kenny set it up the whole time that it wasn't yeah. really going to explode, so they could get out of here with the title, and no one would come out to save. I mean, that's Moxley. that could be the that's joke, a perfect but that excuse. could be the joke. That is the joke, maybe. Eddie Kingston came out there; it's embarrassing. He lays on him to cover him up, and just some sparklers go off, and Kenny and them should have been on the rampway laughing then, like. <laughs> you thought yeah, that the ring was going to blow up. would be laughing. And then Eddie, but- and Eddie, Eddie looks up crying, and he's scared, <laughs> and his friend is injured, and they're laughing because they, they, they got one up on him, making him think his friend was going to die in the ring, and he didn't, and Eddie's been made to be embarrassed. That's what I thought yeah. they would then go with, and then that didn't happen. So I don't but, know what but- the fuck, what was this? Exactly. At least Eddie could have turned around and, and like I said, I, I just said it before, I wish he called an audible. He saw that the pyro was a dud and he was like, oh, and then he just kind of like continued to check on John instead of acting like he was dead. But he might not have seen the explosion. Eddie's such a professional. If he saw a dud, I'm sure he would have called dud something different. Yeah, he had that's- his face down, though, protecting Moxley. So I, that's my only saving grace in this. But I kept thinking, oh, they're going to say Kenny Omega, you know, made it look like the whole arena was going to blow up. But they're not going to do that. But with why didn't they there. call an audible? Why didn't somebody in the back go, guys, run out there and point and laugh? Run out yeah, there and point something. and laugh. And then, and then, it, and then get in right, get in, the booker but then, of the year can't but then, think on the fly. but then, but then get in Bryce, Bryce fucking Fairy's fucking head, get in Bryce Fairy's headset and say, Bryce, have fucking. Uh, Eddie Kingston, have Eddie Kingston sell it like they're making fun of him and it was all a joke. And that's all I had to say is Eddie sell yeah. it like it was all a joke and he played you. Eddie sell it like it was all a joke and he there. played they you. Had, they that's had all they had to they, do. They could have told him what to do. And and even if they didn't get Eddie looking over like, you son of a bitch. Like, I thought my fucking friend was going to die, you fucking son of a yeah, bitch. Yeah, exactly. But no, we don't get like, that. And, and, and they're and laughing Eddie, and they're Eddie's, laughing. Like, <laughs> Omega's like, ah, I got the bell. <laughs> Like, but how do they do that now? They can't save it now because they they Eddie was unconscious. They showed us that Eddie was injured from the yeah, shitty he explosion. Thinks, he thinks it was explosions, but they're not going off. He was exactly. really probably protecting. He was probably really protecting himself because they really were going to blow so much shit up. They were supposed to have a huge pyro explosion at the end there. But here's the thing, as well. You, you just if you're supposed to buy into this and believe it, okay. You have Remsburg looking like a CDC reject, right? He's in there floating around the whole time like and a the, fairy. And the most animated weirdo of all the referees too. Uh, by but, the way. That, but but you're gonna choose him to float around the ring. Fine, fine. But you have all of the AEW 
talent plants around the ring still, they're okay. You can have them there chanting, this is awesome. That's just as bad as they get. AEW has given WWE shit for pumping in chants before with the Thunderdome. But no one says shit when AEW has all the fans around the ring. Oh, those aren't fans. Those are play, uh, paid people. Those are their wrestlers. That's the whole dark crew going off chanting, this is awesome. Jacksonville now, fucking <laughs> jackass! You can support people. <laughs> that's fine. But this shit is ridiculous. I mean... Uh, this was insulting. This was embarrassing. The fact the way Eddie had to sell the damn thing at the end looks ridiculous. I mean, he sold it like he's genuinely dead. I knew that they were going to write off Moxley. And had this been a dud, not you know planned that way, Moxley still could be taken out for injury. He took a one-winged angel on the chair. Like, that looked brutal. He had the barbed wire bat grated on his forehead. You know, they could still say that he was injured here. You can get some some you know leeway to work with this, but there shouldn't have been interferences. You have exploding ropes. You're supposed to keep people in. Why did the Good Brothers need to be there anyways? Like it just, the booking was so just a, a complete mess. And let's let's not forget they had a surprise for the tag team match, which ended up being SCU. They built that up for days now just to go ahead and and, and add more people last second. And SCU is your surprise entrant. And then Ethan Page is your debut for the ladder match. Does anyone give a shit there either? I, I have to say it too. JJ's right. Kane's fireworks and just in the corner, or even Lesnar's pyro for the ring, yeah. is much more impressive than what they did there. Um, I'm gonna. I'm when gonna, they fell uh, to the outside, Kenny Omega kept selling that he was building these traps. Right. This is my biggest upset, like point with all of this. For two or three weeks now, we've seen Kenny constructing and building traps. I kept making the jigsaw joke saying, you know, he wants to play a game. We're going to see him actually do something and, and make this type of, you know, terrible concoction that's going to take out Moxley. All they had is nailed barbed wire tied to boards with a shitty little sparkler underneath it on the outside. That was his three lanes of hell and all this stuff. There was nothing dangerous. And, you know, it's not the, the, the real barbed wire. There's no explosion. Like, They've done worse and bigger stunts last year when they had their lights out match. Listen, and the thing that hurts me too is that this up until the dud at the end, this was my favorite match of the night because I was so excited about what was going to happen. They and sold the danger well of going into the ropes initially for like right. the first five. Yeah, it was doing minutes. well. Yep. They were doing really well building suspense, but then when you finally saw what it looked like, I was like, Oh, well that's disappointing. They they should have just had an infernal match or just have no explosions, barbed wire, and set up the outside. Just a barbed wire rope match would have worked just the same. The explosions, that's you never work with pyros, children, and animal. I'm telling you. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, play. Let's hear what you guys are saying. Shit bum. This is the day that here you died. Thank God I didn't pay $50 for this show. Wow. Firebird with the $5. Firebird, thank you, man. I don't think AEW's dead, Firebird. But this was, I, I, I love AEW. I mean, let me just tell you, I love AEW. Every single Wednesday night, I'm hyped. In fact, yeah, I, look forward in fact to I want you to weekend. know, I want you to know that my rage right now and my anger and fire and stuff like that is only here because last Wednesday, I think I gave AEW like an 8 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10 or something because the first hour was really good and the second wasn't so good. But the first hour and, and the selling of this pay-per-view was so good. So well done. They sold the shit out of this show tonight. It was amazing. So what ended up happening is the reverse of WWE. Normally, WWE has no build-up. The build-up is boring, and, and it's terrible. So Monday Night Raw will be a 3 out of 10. It will be awful. And then the pay-per-view for WWE will be a 6 out of 10. And you'll be like, oh, that was... That was an all right pay per view, I guess. The build up was garbage, and I hated watching Raw every week. But in AEW, what's happened is AEW was great Wednesday night. And and if you look at this entire pay per view, and you look at the entire AEW show, the most excited and best complete thing I saw was Shaq and Jade. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. And, and funny enough. After the match tonight, uh, a bunch of people sent us this, this, but <laughs> you have John Moxley cutting a promo. Eddie's still in the back inside the medic's arms looking like he's just completely dead. And then there's Moxley, the one that took all the punishment, well, cutting a promo saying Kenny Omega may be a tough son of a bitch, but he can't build an exploding ring worth a shit. <laughs> I mean, it's like hilarious. Eddie Kingston's dead in the background and Moxley's up and awake. I mean, the only thing they could say is that that maybe like Eddie Kingston had some kind of heart issue because of the stress of the situation. 
Yeah, like he just went ahead and passed out due to anxiety. Like, like they, they yeah, could do it that, that way. But anytime they try <laughs> and do these, you know, yeah, Halloween Havoc and uh, any type of things with these, it doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work with It Tyler, really you know? ruined Eddie's face turn, too, that we were seemingly yeah, getting. Because this was excellent for him to come out and try and save him. And then the the danger of, oh, my God, it's going to explode, so I'm going to sacrifice my body to, to make sure you survive. You have a kid on the way, and I loved you like a brother. Like, that's so good good that's a great moment and then you got the fans booing the shit out of it to kill it so oh rightfully my God. so this they're, was... they're they're entitled to boo that was that was a hell of a troll job what, yeah, you, what do you call this this is like d-day or something for AEW. this was the worst yeah, this was the worst they've had this is the worst thing that AEW ever has put on i mean what's weird about it too what's strange about this show tonight is that it's not just what happened at the end i feel like the whole show is going to get overshadowed by the failure of the ring pyro. Forget that. If you chopped off the ending of the failure of the ring pyro, the show was terrible. Like before. It was from the beginning to the end was a nightmare. Jim Cornette is going to eat this for fucking breakfast and become the Incredible Hulk on his fucking podcast. <laughs> this is this going to power him up like spinach and Popeye. I cannot wait. Somebody, uh, Diva Bible sent it to us first, but somebody tweeted out they fixed it, and I just tweeted it to you joe that's why i keep laughing it's hilarious let's listen to what moxley said after the match Three on one thing. Kenny Omega may be a tough son of a bitch but he can't make an exploding ring worth a shit Oh my God! I mean, that's and then pretty. T-Bar from Retribution says, "Wait for an explosive new episode of Raw tomorrow night." You know, just oh to throw God. some salt in the wound. Thank you, Ryan. That's funny, but yeah, like I said, with with you know him just selling it in the background. But whoever whoever tweeted that out, <laughs> fucking Eddie Kingston, uh, he's cutting this promo, guys. If you haven't seen it, he's cutting he's just this promo, and then Eddie Kingston's behind him like this. <laughs> so bad he's still in character like a he's sleep. just dead oh my god dude that's the guy that tried to save you i somebody mean, i know he's he's the one saving you you're the one that took the beating and <laughs> i mean I, they, they have to go with they really have to go with the kenny's laughing in a promo on wednesday like <laughs> he's like i didn't know if i would have been in the ring you think i wanted to die out there i didn't need to explode the ring i just needed to beat you i needed you to think the ring was gonna explode you see moxley i'm smart you the whole entire time were rushing, and you saw it in the match. If you go back and watch it, you were rushing quick suplexes after quick suplexes, pins that you never would normally make. You see, you rushed because you were worried you were going to run out of time and the ring was going to explode and kill you. But what if I needed more time to beat you? So I didn't have the ring explode. And the entire time, you were freaked out, and that was in your head, and I knew the whole time the ring wasn't going to explode so I could take my time with you because if I needed more, I was going to get it, and I wasn't going to die doing it. I'm smart, Moxley. That's why I'm still the AEW champion, and your ass went to the hospital. <laughs> Kenny Omega. Much smarter than John Moxley, a street rat. I wrestled over in New Japan and trained people who are worth millions of dollars. And I'm here on TV in front of millions of people with a guy who's been working with me since day one, who's a billionaire for a reason. John Moxley, you were living with horrible parents in the streets of Ohio, having to wrestle in barbed wire and glass your whole life. That's what you do. You're a, you're a joke. You're a gullible idiot. And then, and then you got fucking Eddie Kingston who's like, you thought that was funny. Like, I thought my brother was going to die. I thought I was going to die. And, you know, you've made a fool of me. That's real funny. Like, and it's like this whole thing, like emotionally and stuff like that. And so it actually plays into it. But so like they can actually turn this around into this great story. But it is fucking hilariously disappointing. And after a night that was all disappointment, it was all disappointment yeah. tonight. Oh, my God. Okay, Ethan Page, whatever. Okay, cool. Indie signing, that's fine. Who's the big guy? Who's the big guy? Christian Cage is the big signing. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, had we not had that to look forward to, and we just got a sudden burst of surprise, here you are, here's a new signing, that would have done a lot to improve this night for me, I think. Because, like I said, they just they overhyped it to shit. Right. And then on top of it, you know, with as you said, just repeatedly poor booking decisions throughout most of the night. Not so great matches. That women's match, especially on the the, the pre-show, uh, that was not great. Maki Ito, 
I know people love her. I'm why not against it. I'm why do people love yet. her? Uh, Diva Bible was kind of explaining to me beforehand. I, I didn't quite understand everything. So yeah, she's uh, she was a former pop idol that failed at being an idol in that you know that the, the type of like Japanese music stuff where they're she's you know, doing the sensations the, over the, there. The girl from WWE type of thing where she's going to sing to annoy people or whatever. Well, that's, she's she's a failed idol. Obviously, she wasn't good at it, so she became a wrestler, put her all into that. But she learns a little bit of English every week, and she's learned obviously just terrible things, as, as, you know, such as the the queen of piss and shit and motherfucker and boners and yeah. all the you know things of the such. So she's become like really endearing to the American side of things by embracing you know words learned today, such as hand job and boner. So. Uh, right. Dick Cheese is one of her other recent learnings. So people just got behind her and it became a total simp thing, and everybody jumped on the bandwagon. I could see it being a little bit funny here and there. She's kind of funny just, and fun and stuff, but it's just like, I don't Yeah, care. it's silly. It's just, I, I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. It's just that, that uh, sorry to say, most of the Japanese women all kind of seem the same, and they just. They don't do enough on the United States side of things to differentiate them. They don't, you know, yeah. obviously, if, if you have it in translation, that's great. But if not, it's hard to follow and keep up with the storylines when you don't, when you have a language barrier there, as with most of the things. I mean, New Japan is good about having English commentary, but other in, uh, you know, places, not so much. Granted, though, the, the United States side of things, look what we saw tonight. We had Rio, and then we have another Rio. Well, is it, you know, are they two different people? Close right. enough to the same name. I was you confused. Know, you just, you don't know anything about them. We don't know. That's the thing. It's just, they're not giving any character development or reason to care for any of these people for the most part. So we had Maki Ito, Britt Baker taking on Riho, Thunder Rosa. Uh, bit of a sloppy match here. You know, it wasn't terrible. It was cool to see the crowd be so responsive to Maki Ito. If people really like her, I'm, I'm for it. You know, she wasn't bad by any means. Not my cup of tea, but maybe the gimmick will grow on me as time goes on if she's going to be on Dynamite. Right. But having Thunder Rosa lose here was odd, especially the way they had her come back on the main show later on to be the savior. So, in you know, really odd booking decision there. I guess they're going with a new faction. It seems that they're going to have Maki Ito and Dr. Britt Baker teaming up with Nyla Rose. So I don't know if that'll be good or bad. Nyla wasn't good with Brandy. No, but not, I mean, listen, Nyla just looks like garbage. When, I'm sorry. When she comes out there, I can't even say what I think. I can't even, you can't even say what I'm thinking. I won't even say what I'm thinking. It just doesn't, I don't believe anybody can beat her. Put it that way. I, I, nobody, Shit, nobody, can, nobody can beat Nyla Rose. If that mm. wasn't the most lackluster explosion ever. It, Mario Rodriguez. Buenas noches. Uh, listen, Mario Rodriguez, that was the, that, I mean, it was hilariously terrible. Right. Yes. There's so much bad, especially I mean, because if they just blew up and they didn't have Eddie in the ring, we could have been like, "Oh, it was a dud. It wasn't that bad." But Moxley's already beat to a pulp, so he can kind of just sell it. It's already embarrassing, whatever. But having Eddie be there to save him and have to like survive the blast—that that was the killer of all of this. Yeah, that was bad. Oh my god! I like the story of it too. Having Eddie be there is a good thing. Yes. No one's there for Moxley, so finally Eddie has to like break down in the back. Maybe they'll show some of that and him hemming and hawing and being like, "Forget it, I gotta save him. He's my brother." That's that's you know we know they have history. Dunkachino? Don't mind Could if be I good, do. But... What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say, Say hello, hello to my chocolate blend. I'm usually very positive on this company, but wow, wow, wow. James Mesner, we're we're there with you, brother. I love AEW so much. I really do. I do respect all the wrestlers, all the performers, everybody there. I love them. I love Tony Khan. The commentary was terrible tonight. Again, like it's just so bad, man. Don Callis was the best thing about the night. Don Callis, thank goodness, was there at the end because he was so fun to listen to at the end. I, I enjoyed him. He was fun as color. And and you know what? Honestly, for me, Joe, I'm not sure about you, but my biggest disappointment Shit of bum. the night. Ooh. I spent $50 bones on this. I want my refund, Tony Khan. Yeah. Terrible PPV for $50. WWE can get away with this because it's only $9.99 and you have the entire network. Fuck you, AU. Wow, I mean, there people are pissed. Uh, listen, we're not we're not trying to like pile on here, but Pitbull, Bone, no, what's no, up, Pitbull? Not. 
But, dude, people are not happy tonight. Like, people are Twitter actually is angry. angry. A lot dude, of refunds and this was people terrible. making fun of the ending. But, but for me, honestly, the biggest disappointment was the opening official match on the main card, not the kickoff, but the tag match. I really expected not only to have Jericho and MJF go over, and it's okay, like, oh, you didn't get your way, that's why I didn't like it. No, it just it didn't the make The whole much show sense. was terrible. Yeah, but but here's the thing. You know, a lot of people will say, "Oh, why? Because you didn't get the people that you wanted to win." That that's not the issue here. Because the young bucks could have won in a, no, in a I, bunch we, of other ways that would have been better. But the story, the way they told this, they they definitively ended the feud. It's over. You're not getting. I mean, wh what's the interest in having them face off again? They completely wrote off MJF and Chris Jericho ever having a chance with the titles. Okay, so now they're just rushing right in to break up the inner circle. Wednesday, we're getting another conference with the inner circle you know we've had press conferences we've had just this last week we had another version of a press conference we've had debates with jericho it, it's it's never ending it seems now we have another you know conference and we're going to discuss changes to the inner circle so it seems like obviously that's when jericho will soon be turning face and we'll get mjf taking over the inner circle or attempting to anyways I, I thought Sammy would get involved with the match. Maybe they kind of set that up and all the interviews they've been saying, you know, don't mention Sammy's name. Nothing from Sammy Guevara tonight. He did tweet that he wants to face Christian. That'd be a good match, I'm sure. But what's the story there? I, I, you don't always need story for everything, but I'm saying at least, you know, build him something. But this match just didn't have a lot to it. It, it, it really was disappointing. I didn't think Jericho looked up. Uh, quite piss poor here for most of it he looked really out of sorts and out of breath and not great um when he got the lion salt and they both went for the uh the super kicks and then they did the, the double bte trigger there and you saw him just barely get a chance to kick out it wasn't like a, a suspenseful pin it was like oh god can he get through it <laughs> at least mjf broke that up in time but the ending, you know, they hit the Meltzer driver on Jericho and, and Matt gets the win. It's like, it just, it felt very anticlimactic at that point. After everything that they tried to, to build, the ending just felt very flat and lackluster. So What's crazy didn't, is... It didn't feel like a pay-per-view. didn't have a special feel to it. This felt like a, a, a Young Bucks match we see every Wednesday. No, well, yeah, that's where their that's previous the pay-per-view outings have been better. Yeah, so, so, right, Young Bucks match wasn't even a Young Bucks match. It was an exact copy of everything they've done but really bad. So, like, I mean, not really bad, but, like, even less, right? So, like, usually the criticism of Young Bucks is, okay, that was crazy and sick, but it's, like, the same thing they always do, so 7 or 8 out of 10. But tonight, I'm giving that a 5 out of 10. So, like, the Young Bucks match, disappointing. The bar was lower than usual for them. The the, yeah. the Rumble match, I mean, there, there really wasn't that much to that. The team coming back was SCU. It was just a Rumble match with tag teams. Okay, it was at least as good as normal or below the bar. Um, the, the, uh, everything else that happened, the women's match, that was weird. Like it was kind of good in a way. Cause, and then it got really sloppy and bizarre. And so it then got really sloppy, like halfway through once they, they, you know, she did, did that. Like, I think it was the first or second running. I think it was the second running knee. Cause, uh, Rio did like this little comeback and then she hits her again with the running knee and then they're just laying there. And then from there, it just got really sloppy. I remember being like, wow, somebody got their bell wrong. Jake, did you know that the sparkler is all elite? <laughs> the makes sense now i can't believe it what a signing you know that my cat's asshole is in the camera Move oh it. yeah look at that yeah get it in there man hey kitty want to see it here comes deftones our buddy it's our buddy deftones Tony Deftones Khan. 22 took four dollars. Watching Archer walk around ringside halfway through the match and figure he's setting something up outside the ring. Then 20 seconds later, the aerial view shows him kneeling on the floor, watching and waiting for a spot. Yeah. Holy shit! Past the Monday bleach. Yeah, Deftones. Uh, Jake kind of ranted on that earlier, and it's like, yeah, the 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 whole ladder match. Then, then later, the ladder match was disappointing. <laughs> like I couldn't get over the fact that the brass ring looked like a floating life preserver, and then on top of that. It just never connected. It was all people waiting around for the next goofy thing to happen. Yeah. It was really. way too much waiting around. But I was kind of around. expecting, not not to that extent that it was at, but I figured they'd have like a lot of spots. So I, I was prepared for that. But it was much worse than it ever should have been allowed to be, especially with Cody in there. That's what was really surprising. Hikaru Shida, we haven't really seen her forever. 
never on Dynamite, never on TV. And then Rio Mizunami, she's not even, you know, an AEW talent. So you know she's not going to win. And already the match is kind of written off. You don't know anything about Rio Mizunami. So they give you a little bit beforehand with a video package, but it's it's not enough to really give a damn. And as you said, the match gets sloppier and sloppier, just kind of falls apart. And then we have this big attack afterwards where you have the women armed in the ring. Rebel has a crutch. Maki Ito is there taking, you know, her her middle fingers to the air. Britt Baker is is beating down Rio. And then you've got uh, Vicky Guerrero in the ring as well. And Thunder Rosa runs out, and they all run scared like she's Sting. Yeah. What are you running from? She has no weapon. They have all the weapons. She has no weapon. She has nothing. She's run- You already beat her before. You pinned her in a previous match earlier in the night, not but two hours ago. And now she's like this big threat. I can understand if she came out with, you know, like, and it was like, oh, my God, she's got, you know, so-and-so with her as well. You know, she's got, uh, you know, Riho and Jade and whoever. You know, they just, they came up. But just having Thunder Rosa made no sense for her to run off unarmed. You know, everybody that was in the ring. So that was stupid as well. That looked bad. All the heels always run away. Team Taz does it. You know, whoever the, facing the Bucks, they do it. it. It just, the bulk of the match felt very clunky and a, a, a lot of repeat moves as well. A lot of running knees. And so just not a great match. Then we had Miro and Kip Sabian. And the pre stuff with Miro was good. You need to see him freak out and telling the referee to, to you know, let, ring the damn bell. And he's already got Chuck pretty much bloodied and beaten in the ring. It should have just been done and over with at that point. Why did a bloodied and beaten Chuck need to get offense in on Miro to make him look like a badass? Right. Again, we don't always need squash matches, but this didn't need to be eight minutes fucking long. Thank there God. Was, I thought it was short, He was already though, bleeding and, and practically dead. You just should have pinned him and it was done and over with. I'm, I actually thought it was short, so I was happy. I was like, thank God this is over. It, it got over right as I was ready to lose my mind. I was like, all right, good, yeah, this I, is done. I was losing my mind pretty quick already because I knew you were like, all right, got to wait for Orange Cassidy to come in and get the orange punch. Let's let's get this going. And, oh, you're going to lose no matter what, though. And I, I hope that this is the end of the feud. I can't I believe. I over, choked him out, let it be done with. I can't believe that this night was so bad. I really just Did can't believe just it. Did you just donate to Joe? Did you just Metal donate Mastodon, to Joe? Metal Mastodon, our buddy. Thank you for the donation. And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself Go ahead. in the bunghole. Feast it up. <laughs> Yo, Metal Mastodon, I don't know why that didn't play the uh, donation. Let me try to read it. Uh, Metal Mastodon said, um, I think, I guess it played out of order. Barbed wire matches. The ropes are supposed to be totally replaced with barbed wire. Exploding. The explosions are supposed to come from underneath the tables, not next to them. And the explosions yeah. on the barbed wire are supposed to go inward. Yeah, those. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know they were trying to protect them, obviously, but then don't do it if you can't do it where yeah. it looks believable. And I mean, like, there's so much more to complain about than that. But you that's a, those are good points. Joe? Did you just donate to Joe? What's up, Pichar? Thank you for the donation. Pachardo. And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself. We were fixing it on Twitter and made it look like the ring blew up with a nuke. That's hilarious. <laughs> Pacharo uh, says, uh, I could yell at my kid. Hold on a minute. He says, AEW, just wow, 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 wow. I don't know how Eddie Kingston done got knocked out when there was no explosion. If he wasn't knocked out and sitting there confused, it wouldn't have been so much better. Yeah, it would have been so much better. Exactly. This was terrible, uh, no, bro. No doubt about that. I mean, it just it made him look very foolish. Poor Eddie gets a good face turn out of you know something that makes sense. and uh, just, Did you just, just donate disappointed. to Joe? Did yeah, I didn't pay for the pay per view, so Joe? I'm definitely happier than Joe. Thank uh, you for the donation. So this is the worst <laughs> one. Metal Mastodon, you got that right. It. I'm going to feast myself Be as well. in the bunghole. <laughs> I guess these don't read. So um, it says, uh, part one, um, because of laws in the U.S., a lot of this death match, you can blame John McCain, a lot of Congress... For this going back to UFC's non-rules, 
do certain laws, no no real landmines. Bryce looked like a bitch when the sparklers went off at the end. Well, Bryce Bryce Remsberg Bryce always looks that way. Bryce Remsberg sucks, so I'm not surprised. He's a but really, fade to black. You you don't need real landmines. You just have to have it look intimidating. It's the thought. Yes, that's um, all there is to it. It's it's the thought of everything. Yes. You know, and that was the thing too. We had this. I was like, "Oh, Did you know, you Chekhov's gun was the timer. Did they didn't do it, and then they still went and Joe? turned it down, which was stupid. The match was Thank over." Thank you for the donation, and because you donated, when MJF and Jericho myself would tag the referee, the just let them come in and do <laughs> numerous double team moves. <laughs> I didn't care to make the non-legal get man get out. She just stood there watching. It was literally like a tornado tag for eighty percent of the match. Trash. Yeah. That's what Death oh, no, Dome no says. doubt about it. Yeah, because they they had certain hey, times where city, MJF didn't really get the, the really tag go back go in. Donations are taking over on the mind of their own right now. City. Yeah. In the city, feeling shitty. We're gritty, we're gritty as can be. We can survive off a motherfucking old PC. Fade to black tipped eight dollars. Overall, great sell job to hype this up for air. You they even made me buy this. I know, Joe, you hate the back and forth striking, especially women's match, but I like it and why I, I like NJPW. Different opinions when it comes to wrestling, though. Thank you, Fade to Black. Yeah, I couldn't stand the striking tonight. Strike me, then I'll strike you, then you strike me. Like, yeah. I, I hate it. Terry, I, Terry Punk also said, you know, that the barbed wire death match shortens careers. Well, if you're embarrassed to death, maybe. Yeah, I mean, this was really embarrassing. Get this. Meltzer just said that apparently somebody on the Spanish announce team thought that Ethan Page was Christian Cage. So they spoiled it early <laughs> by calling him Christian Cage over and over and over. Oh, my God. Instead of Ethan Page. That Oops. is hilarious. Now, I obviously don't speak Spanish, so I'll have yeah, to... Yeah, but can you imagine... That is on Dave Meltzer's Twitter, though, so I do believe it to be credible. Can you imagine the rundown on on like jr and the new japan like the things that he probably oh said about God. people that they were like the american <laughs> announce team said this the american announce team did that this and the other thing <laughs> you donated oh damn oh, shit. i'm gonna take my dick out because you donated 50 bucks you donated 50 bucks Ay, Dios mio. I'm a rich Cristiano Cage. john wills tipped 50 dollars well john. my 50 dollars was fucking wasteful Tony Khan, you can take my $50 and shove it up your Trump licking fucking ass. Oh. Ooh. The ladder match, world tag team title match, was the matches of the night. Other than that, fuck this show and fuck this. Co oh, <laughs> damn. Uh, John Wills. John Wills just really went in on uh, AEW. $50. No, so John Wills spends $50, gets mad about it. Then he throws $50 to me. Yeah. He wanted to. Say F you to Tony and, wow. and send it right to you. He's That's probably going to. Special F you Tony bucks. And then he called, uh, then he took a shot at Tony about Trump, I guess. I don't know. But it, listen. <laughs> I guess so. Oh. I, I'm, I'm just genuinely confused by a lot of what went down tonight. You know, Tony wins Booker of the Year, and this shows a lot of inner experience, unfortunately. I'm not a Booker. I'm not saying I know better by any means. I just, as a fan, did not find any of this to, to live up to any of the hyper expectations that they set. Even Meltzer said that was a bad ending, and he is a pro-positive AEW everything. I, people always joke that he's being paid by them constantly. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen so many versions right now where they cover each other, and the whole ring explodes, and that's what I was thinking would happen. I mean, it looks like yeah, we've seen it. death happens. We've seen it back in the 90s. The whole ring erupts into flames. That's what should have happened. Exactly. If that went off and Eddie was in the ring, you could buy that. And that's yep. not dangerous to do. There's ways to do it. I'm telling you this. You use what you use is you use mostly smoke and then the explosion noises. And then you even play blast. You yeah, even play not... blast. You play the sound of blasts. Exactly. It's not exactly. I, I'm, you I'm just shocked. nailed it. It's mostly smoke and sound. Smoke and sound. That's smoke all you and need. sound. And you know what you usually do is for the for the fans at home. You don't have to worry about it. You can add in sweetening. But you remember Ryback's um, pyro, where it blew up behind the stage. He went feed me more. When he slammed his hand down the third time, more. It would. You would have that big 
boom. All that was was a, a flashbang they set off behind the stage because there's never any pyro in front, but it was a concussive blast. That's all they needed, a few concussive blasts under the ring or in the middle so the or even behind the crowd so everyone in the audience goes, oh, and you get that loud audible gasp reaction. And then you have the smoke and a couple of every turnbuckle has a cane pyro set up and then you fill the ring with the smoke quick. It's not hard. Yeah, it's it's really not that hard to do. Uh, somebody uh, did say that this has happened before with Terry Funk and they uh, it was Ed's view. And he shared yeah. the video with us where it, it l- literally failure to launch happens yeah. in a Terry Funk uh, death match. Yep. So and you hear the crowd boo and yep, yeah. Same thing happens. Um, but the thing is, that's why I don't really want to focus only on the pyro thing because that's not the point. The point is because the, if you had a straight line to show a line graph to show you my interest in the show tonight, it would never get past a five until this main event. And when the explosions started going off, I started my, my interest level went from being a flat line five all night to jumping to a six, seven, and up to about a seven when they started going off the off the ring into the pyro and stuff. And I was like, okay, it's getting more exciting. It's getting more exciting. What's going to happen? And then it sort of ended, and I went, oh man, I, I I expected a little bit more. So that stinks. But okay, the big thing is that the ring's going to blow up and something crazy is going to go down at the end here. And then nothing <laughs> happens. So then yeah. my my interest went right flat line back down again. But so like. The problem is we're really focused on this, but honestly, it's the rest of the night being terrible. Like, from everything, everything was not good. And then the announcement of Christian Cage was not good. That was, what a miss. What a terrible thing to do, to overhype people. And they overhyped it. I don't care what anybody says. They're smart. They're not stupid, right? Like, there's people on, like, Vince Russo and stuff that is, that's calling AEW marks and stuff like that. And Tony and Tony Khan's a mark, they're saying, and stuff like that. You know, I mean, listen, I mean, maybe that's, I don't know. I don't know what's going on that they didn't know. Like, dude, if we say a big star is coming, like the thing that makes me want to break stuff is the fact that Big Show is a bigger name than Christian Cage, in my opinion. Not even like, like Christian Cage is not a bigger name than Big Show. The only way this was going to work for me is if somebody the caliber of somebody big, somebody bigger than Edge. I thought somebody bigger than Edge was coming out. Yeah, and I, I you agree gave with many me of those edges. That say it was like you know a whole night of passionate sex and just two tiddlywinks that come. It's That's not exactly rewarding. what it was. It was oh my god from the very beginning to the end and then the ultimate like look at this match with exploding things oh but and uh, like it was like dude i felt like i felt like i was in a room and tony khan was slapping me in the face over and over again and as i listened to jr with his horrible voice tonight and his uninterested enthusiasm and tony shivani's blahness on the on the fucking microphone and then excalibur who, who always stutters all over the place anyway himself. And then I heard Don Callis. Don Callis was the best person on the microphone, but he was only on the microphone for the main event. So, I mean, you couldn't, you can't get any worse than this. This was the worst show AEW, in my opinion, has put on. I don't think there was a worse one. I really no, don't. This, this is definitely the worst uh, pay-per-view, especially. But even even with weekly television, I think this would be the worst. Yes. And whoever whoever added the Titanic song to Eddie holding Moxley, oh my God, this is. Take cover! Take cover! Take cover! Oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> Listen, dude, this is this is actually a video someone oh edited the blowing up. Listen to, I mean, poor poor Excalibur is trying to sell this. And listen to Excalibur try to sell this. And then he's like, oh, wait a minute. Okay. And then the next explosion. And he goes, okay, now it's going. Oh, my God. But then it, it doesn't happen. It's, you can literally hear the sparklers. No. Kicks it. Oh, my God. Oh my god! <laughs> it's 
like he didn't want to sell it yet. He's like, no, I'm not going to sell it yet. I'm not going to sell it. And then the big boom went off at the end. He went, okay, I'll sell that. I can, I can sell that. I can. So, oh, my God. <laughs> it looks like they're going to go into Kingston the Tony Khan saying uh, Moxley saying that Omega can't build is a, is a story. So, Wrestling Observer just tweeted out, uh, Ryan, let us know. Tony Khan says they are uploading the video of Moxley saying Omega can't build a ring worth shit to their YouTube. And he says he's not sure what people expected outside actually blowing guys up. Omega building a dud is the story. Khan didn't say or imply there was a misfire. So I guess they're going to go with the story now, obviously, to save their asses that this was intended to be what happened with, with you know, Kenny Omega building this intentionally. I okay, mean, so yeah, can yeah. they do that now, though, with Eddie lying there dead in the ring? I mean, it feels yeah, like they no, missed because, the chance to yeah, say this was... No, I, that, I, if I was them, I would 100% go with that. I would they, go, they I would have go. to. Damage control beyond belief. Well, they, because they also to. it makes Kenny seem like a sicko. Exactly, like, and, it, and it, it's, it's much better if they if they well, I mean, realistically, you wanted it to blow up, but if they couldn't have that, then let this be their their fix. Sadly, we know it's not the case, but if they can, you know, make chicken salad out of chicken shit and go for it, yeah. But it's funny how Moxley, you know, knew enough to say Kenny Omega can't build and you know blow up an exploding ring worth of shit because he's, he's he's a professional he knew that it didn't go right poor poor eddie's still selling in the back but for tony khan to say i'm not sure what people expected outside you know we're not actually going to blow guys up all week tony khan's been on every single wrestling thing related under the sun talking up how deadly and life-changing and altering this match is going to be so what do you mean? I'm not sure what people expected when you you blew up their expectations, pun intended. You made people think that you know that one of them could die. Yeah, this was really. That's how bad. hard they sold this. I don't care. Listen, I if Tony Khan's doing whatever involved with the story. See, Tony Khan shouldn't be saying that. Tony Khan should be saying, "I'm mad as hell at Kenny Omega because he's the one that came to us." and said he was going to do all this sick, sadistic stuff. And although we were reluctant at first, once him and John agreed to the deal, I promoted this, That's you know how bad this could be. And we promoted it this way. But now Kenny Omega is laughing in the back as he comes back here. And we all saw what happened out there. Just sparklers went off. And then Kenny Omega comes out and says, you really think I would blow up a ring that I could have possibly blown up in? That's stupid. Instead, I made you think it was going to blow up. And it was in your head the whole time, and then I defeated yeah. you because I'm smart. And then it's like <laughs> now you're now Tony Khan can play the good guy, and now yeah. you're giving heat to Moxley because everyone's mad the ring didn't blow up, and Mox is like, I mean um, Omega rather, Omega, and Omega's yeah. like, ha ha, you think I was gonna blow the blow myself up? Maybe he goes, no, I was just in his head, and I beat him because I'm smarter. And yeah, then, Kenny can say, I would never risk actually blowing myself up. What are you, stupid? You know, he yeah. can sell that point. But Tony Khan, direct quote here, when talking to PW Insider, it's going to be the craziest match ever on pay-per-view. John and Kenny tore the house down, and I paid a pretty big fine in Baltimore. I think this will be crazier and bigger and better, and I can't wait for a revolution. You know, that's just one quote. Their right last quote, match was way better than this. What's he I talking about? Tony Khan is wrong. That quote is re like you oversold it, dude. You oversold the shit out of this show. It they oversold sucked. the whole night. The whole night was oversold. Oh, a big star's coming. Christian Cage. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. Ethan Page from Impact is here. Who gives a fuck? He looks like generic wrestler number seven. Scorpio Sky grabbed a Sonic ring because they cannot ever oh my let God. Cody get Vince McMahon out of his head. And that brass ring, oh, you got to have a brass ring, don't you? I mean, I, I was kind of the opposite. I gave them a pass last week because I thought the comment was more about Jericho than NXT. Maybe I just took it wrong. But I honestly said that, you know, the, the comment they made about Jericho curtain jerking at the Performance Center, I didn't take that as a hit on NXT. I took that as an insult towards Jericho saying, yeah, you're a legend, but all you're going to do is teach people. You wouldn't be relevant if it wasn't for us. That's how I took that. Usually, I'm not a big fan of them always going after WWE because it feels like they're clawing upwards. They can't, you know, quite get to that point. 
why did it have to be a stupid looking brass ring and especially to have it look like a sonic ring on top of it that was just ridiculous i mean granted it's not a briefcase that they can cash in but they just should have had it be a simple clipboard contract for christ's sakes that ring was ridiculous him holding it up scorpio sky looked like a douchebag with that thing in his hands he really did that sucked and it was oh my god was it bad I he's can't. holding it up like he's you know ready to, to have the emerald powers. Like seriously, he's, he's oh going to fight Sonic for the last ring. It, it's stupid. It's just ridiculous looking. Maybe he's got hemorrhoids after the ladder match and he can use it as a as a seat to comfort his ass. But between that, Christian Cage, and then the we didn't speak of it yet, surprisingly enough. But of course, we have to address the you know sting sized elephant in the room, the street fight. It wasn't bad. But there was so much oddly handled in it, and I know that that Darby Allen was given a lot of leeway to inject his creative liberties into this. He he went to film school for college. You know, this is something that he's obviously passionate about. So he he wanted to have it be cinematic. But there was too many times where it looked like a goth music video mixed with like a, a ninety late nineties like skater video. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what it felt like. It, it didn't. You got an army of hoodlums. Where did they come from? Why do we always have to have an army of sting people? Why do you know that that's stupid? They made uh, Will Hobbs look like an idiot coming in with the orange mask and then getting taken out super quick. The 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 ending basically of Darby coming down and crashing through Cage. As much as that looks badass, it's like what? Where do we get? Are they dead? Or what do we get from this? And then Sting, after everything they've done in this match, all the big moves and throwing people through glass panes and baseball bats and all this shit, a, a shovel hit that was one of the, the most severe shovel hits I think I've seen in decades. That was brutal from Sting. That was a legit shoot shovel hit onto Cage. And from there, what did that we get? That shovel hit was actually popped me because it was so horrific. Yeah, I went, but, it was but dude, so, so strong. Right before that, though, Sting is literally in a circumference of about 40 feet away and he throws his bat at him the bat hits the wall lands and misses the guy and then sting walks all the way around to right where he is picks up the bat again why didn't you pick up the bat before yeah, sting i don't think got that's there? a nitpick i don't think any of this is nitpick. that's not a it's nitpick not that's saying, literally like, retarded like we just we all watched holes. it these are major major issues why why suddenly you've never had all these people with sting now suddenly sting has an army he has a total well, i don't care that about that myself them. i'll tell you i, I don't know but, care. but that bothers me it doesn't make sense uh, you could you could not find a problem with it, but for me personally, having his Darby Allen's army suddenly is fucking stupid. It's stupid. It well, doesn't make is, sense. See, the whole thing is dumb to me. I mean, you know, the whole cinematic thing. No, I know, but it it, it didn't need to be dumb. It was great. You could have had Matt Sting in a, that, that was a really cool setting. They stole the the you know late nineties uh, WWF War Zone setting that you saw for the opening of Raw. You know that was really the the whole warehouse. It had a really good look to it. But pulling up with the music videos and the cars and you know, they got to play the music. And then the commentary over it did not need to happen. I think the commentary over it was the biggest, like, injustice of all. You should have just heard them well, talk Well, their commentary to sucks. They're, that's yeah. why. I'll tell you why the commentary sucks. Because there's been a couple matches recently where there was no commentary over theatrical matches, and it was terrible. They needed, they needed commentary. But tonight, those guys, they don't care because they don't understand what they're watching. They don't know how to call this shit anymore. I'm sorry. I had Jim Ross on this no. show. Jim Ross don't give a fuck. These people don't give a fuck. WWE's not going to be... I don't give a fuck. I don't care. People, I'm going to get emails tomorrow. I'm going to get emails. Well, Joe, this is why nobody will hire you because you're criticizing. I don't give a fuck. They're never going to fucking hire me. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about WWE anymore. I don't give a fuck about AEW anymore. I don't give a fuck. They're not going to hire me. I'm going to fucking die not doing the thing that I'm the best at. But that's fine. Let me tell you this. Your commentary sucks. I love Jim Ross. He's like my favorite commentator of all time almost. I uh, love the guy to death. He fucking is terrible now. He was fun sometimes, especially at the beginning of the night, and then it just got worse. And then they don't know what they're looking at. They're like, they're, they're it's, you almost hear that they're irritated with what they're seeing and that they're almost bewildered by what they're seeing. And Tony Schiavone is just, just I, I actually I really like Tony Schiavone. But he, again, it just doesn't work. They sound like shit. Don Callis was the best thing all night. Excalibur. I like Excalibur because he knows all the moves and stuff like that, and sometimes he's hype. Like, he's the most hyped up of all of them, but I don't even like it. It's like, yeah. dude, this the fucking commentary team is terrible. This commentary me, team is I fucking had terrible. I would be like the, the Boneyard match. I wouldn't have had commentary, you know, hearing them insult each other and talk back and forth. That's what you could have used. 
you should have had Ricky Starks and Cage acting like real assholes the entire time, you know, frat boying it up. Uh, Sting, you know, the, less is more for him saying, but same thing, you know, you could have had them grunting, moaning, you know, selling the, the injuries and impacts and no, I didn't want to see someone dead, but I wanted to see something that, that, that looked more believable and made more sense. You, you want to have these cinematic things, uh, you know, all right, it's more logical to do it with Sting because he can't wrestle straight up, you know, the same way that he used to, obviously he's older, makes perfect sense to do the cinematic style, but do it in a way that that's at least entertaining. I didn't find hardly any of this entertaining. I, I got taken out of it more than I, I imagined I would. And especially the commentary just, just destroying everything that happened here then they always have to overbook things and throw in these stipulations with the young bucks if we lose we'll never challenge for the title again same thing with cody and then if i don't beat jericho and uh, so now if darby allen goes ahead and you know if he can't compete for wednesday then he has to relinquish the title since when was that a rule instated you know when, when uh, things like that. so you haven't forced him to defend it in weeks but but now he asked you know, just that kind of yeah, shit where was me. sammy Guevara? the ladder match could have used him Sammy Guevara, I said before, we should have had him. He should have broken up the MJF match at least, or or been involved in something. All maybe he he'll be the one tweet out that he wants to take out Christian. I think that it's possible. I was thinking maybe it's possible when MJF turns on him Wednesday, if that's what happens. It that seems like they'll eventually go may, that. Maybe route, Sammy but. will show up to save Jericho or something. I don't know. Yeah, because then Jericho will will be proven that oh, Sammy was right the whole time. Uh, MJF is a twat, and I'm gonna pass. Lo and behold. I'm going to pass out, Jake. Did you just donate to Joe? You. Did you just donate to Joe? John Wills earlier with the $50, the John Wills. And because Huge you bomb. donated, I'm going to feast myself. Fox News. In the bunghole. <laughs> Fox News success tipped $3. I know this is very off topic, but I want to point out how much of a fake news liar fraud idiot Tucker Carlson is. He did a whole segment on the Sneeches and how the liberals are censoring it. But the fact is the book Sneeches is not being banned at all. I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, you're going after the only right-wing news channel, man. Why don't you go after the six liberal ones, if anything? I mean, come on. There's like literally six liberal channels lying their fucking eyes off, and you pick yeah, the but, one Republican one? I mean, who gives a fuck? They're all lying. I mean, I'm still not agreeing with any censorship with Dr. Seuss, but they made it sound like his entire catalog from the cat in the hat onward was censored. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah. or canceled, excuse one me. One side's and canceling that the books, case, the so. other side's saying they're all canceled. They're all retards. The left and the right are retards. If you're a Republican, you're a fucking idiot. If you're a Democrat, you're a fucking idiot. All right? I don't give a fuck. They're, they're all retard asshole idiots. Don't bring up fucking politics on this show because i'll flip the fuck out these retards in our country voted for george bush twice all right and the guy lied about a war like this is fucking america we're fucking stupid we probably right. won't be here Throw in a, a shoe couple the days. president again yeah we won't be here in a couple of years probably with the way these fucking people are going but let me play some more donos yeah did you just donate fuck everybody to joe? did you just donate to joe Seth Negan says, what if Thank Sammy Guevara is working donation. with MJF? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you donated. That'd be weird. I'm going to feast myself in the bunghole. <laughs> Deftones 22 tipped $1. Anyone checking in on scenes view that Christian signed and not CM Punk? I know I told you guys earlier, but did anyone else hear Daz or someone opening up a soda at the start of the Sting match? Yes, oh, yes, yes, I even went back that like 30 seconds Darby and you were right. the glass door. Fire. You donated Show was so bad I didn't bucks. care. I'm going to take out because you donated Shell. 50 bucks. You donated 50 bucks, motherfuck boy. I'm a rich motherfucker. Shell tipped $50. Okay, biggest troll job of the year so far. Fuck you, Tony. <laughs> anyway, just wow. sending love. Thank you, Shell. Much love. Shell dropping the $50. Shell, thank you, Shell. Holy thank shit. You, Shell. Hopefully you can, can see us in clear HD and you're feeling all right. I'm sorry. I'm just fu I'm furious tonight about this show. I, I'm, I'm ready to go well, off. I'm extremely heated because, you know, it's, oh, you don't, I like AEW. I wanted them to do well and uh, to succeed. I was, I was really hoping, you know, at first I'm like, ah, oh, this is why I don't like, you know, barbed wire death matches and because they always come out, you know, most times shitty and they, they, this was my worry. It wasn't because I didn't want to see them have the match. It just should have been a barbed wire death match. They didn't need the explosion part. That just fucking killed it. I mean, 
it's a joke now. No, AEW is not screwed. They're not done for. They're not, you know, it, it, it's nothing like that. Yeah, they're that. not done for. AEW is not dead. AEW doesn't suck. Just tonight was terrible. Like, that's all. Tonight was terrible. The buildup to the show was amazing. The buildup to this show was so good. But they should have dialed it. They should have, knowing what they knew they were doing, they should have not been doing things as much. It still would have been a good buildup. It still could have been a really good buildup. And maybe it's a little bit our fault. Maybe we are expecting a little too much that's probably true we're expecting too much but they did build it too much and then jake just read tony khan's own words and i'll tell you man they really did they oversold it and they should have known i said this i go there's no way they don't know that if, know. They, if they march out christian or somebody like that that or rvd it's not going to be enough that's not enough people want something big they got to know but, that but he right? was on youtube shows and, and AEW podcasts and other podcasts not plugging people intentionally here but he was all over the youtube you know iwc and stuff saying these things about you know most explosive literally and and you know the de death defying and he just made and the biggest signing ever you know this is someone that can out wrestle everyone yeah the biggest signing ever christian was jericho a workhorse no christian, well kurt angle is a workhorse christian's not a workhorse he had some i now i didn't watch when he was in tna live i've since gone back and seen some of the, like the, the highlight matches but i didn't watch tna in its heyday live when he was in it or anything like that i, I didn't care about impact dude the unprettier is a retarded move. Yeah, I've never cared for that finisher, but I I saw you know him see and find success in TNA. He did a good job coming from WWE as like you know Edge's second or the the least you know favorite of the brood, and didn't re ever really have any single success worthwhile in WWE, and was able to be the main event star in, in TNA for quite some time. He did a really good job, but even then he felt like the main star of TNA, not WWE. If if he wasn't booked like he, like we were getting this massive major guy tonight, I would have been like. I would have been happy. I would have said, yeah, Christian's like a solid middle uh, card guy for them. What is Christian known for? Being in a tag team. But but I'm saying specifically in the tag team, everyone goes, goes back to tables, ladders, and chairs. Yeah. You had a surprise entrant tonight in a ladder match. You hired Christian. Right. Yeah, it should have been like the Hardy Boys debut at WrestleMania. That that or should have returned. The, the roof would have tore off the place if they never hinted at it. Just said we have a sixth entrant, and you know, don't even say you have a sixth entrant. Don't let anybody know there's going to be a surprise. And then when you go that night, be like, well, five's an odd number. Let's make it six. I like even numbers. You know, something uh, I don't, stupid. No, I, you know? Listen, I don't care if you have a mystery guy. That's fine. That would have worked. Mystery guys That's are good fine. too, but that usually, I would have done I that. I got. I do want to sell the pay per view. I would have done. I, I know, guy. but my worry with mystery guys is it always makes it obvious. Like, oh, the mystery guy is going to win. I know you got to sell the pay per view too, so it's it's difficult booking. He there, didn't have you know? to but, win though, but there. Like, no, he doesn't. But I think like that always puts the idea. Even you and I picked the mystery guy to be first, and then number two was if, Scorpio Sky, and three was you know. So we we went. You I would have cheered if I was there. I would have cheered if I was there because I respect Christian and like yeah, I like him and I, I like Christian more than you do. In a way, but I, I'm I'm just I'm irrit. They've made me hate him. At this yeah, point, they 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 ruined what could have been something special. Christian, as well though, like I selfishly don't know that much about his status at this time. Uh, I I'm not sure because he wasn't able to wrestle for so many years, had to retire, and then was able to come back briefly. But that was part of it too because we just saw him in the Rumble a few weeks ago, and he had this really great moment with Edge. And it sucks that Edge is finally back, so now we can finally see some pretty cool story between these two. Edge beats Roman at Mania, and then you have Christian and him finally finish off, the, you know, and have their their one time feud. You know, there's money to be made in that, but so hopefully they get something good out of Christian in, in AEW. Oh, it was God. it was surprising to see him there, but not the. It really surprise wasn't surprising to see him there. It wasn't. It's not surprising I mean, to see him here. What are you talking about? No, I, well, it's I don't, not surprising I didn't to see him. It would have been surprising AEW. to see Brock Lesnar or CM Punk or yes, somebody like that. Yes, that's a true surprise. It's not surprising that, to see but... Christian. He's fucking terrible. He's, of course he went to AEW. WWE doesn't want to use him. Well, he, see, that's the thing. WWE doesn't want to use him, and that's the truth, and that's what we're hearing right, more Right, because more, he's but... fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, do, can he's you... just not as desirable as, as they're making him out to be. What, what's, what's a good Christian match? Uh, him and Randy Orton had one really excellent match. Christian and uh, if what you want to go solo or just him? And, just uh, solo because he's solo. Bunch, but solo yeah, tag teams uh, is a head. bunch. Uh, a few of the matches he had in TNA were good. You said you didn't even watch had, him. 
No, I said I didn't watch it when they were live. I've gone back and watched his run. But can you name a match? Later. Like, what pay-per-view? I'm, like, I suck with TNA and names off the top of my head. Um, can, I would have the, to go but back But we and should think. know. If he's that good, Like you should, everybody should know oh, I'm not right away. boasting about him like he's perfect. I'm, I'm no, not he's not perfect. Of course he's not. No one's perfect. That's the stupid thing to say. He's fucking just not good. He's not good. I mean, he's good. Okay, he's good, but he's not that great. It's not a great... Th oh, my God! Christian's here! They're fucking idiots! Is he great on the mic? I mean, a little no, bit? No, certainly not. He's he's decent at promos, but he was, it was always edge to me, you know? That was the thing. I, I, that's why I said I'm just... I'm, I'm still a little surprised to see him there. I'm surprised they chose him, but... I just don't understand what they... What were they thinking? We get this crazy guy coming, like, oh, it's this big star, future Hall of Famer. I guess he is, but it's like, dude, they this is like Road Dog is a yeah, bigger I signing mean, to me. Road Dog, obviously, yeah, he always had good matches with AJ Styles, but everyone does. They, I we could signed have a good Marty Jannetty. Uh, he had good matches with like Jeff Jarrett, uh, even some with Abyss, some with uh, Samoa Joe, but but. The, most of those people that we named there, just about everybody, even Angle, uh, you know, you would you would pretty much get a good match out of anybody. So that's not saying much. You would always get a good match out of AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, and Jeff Jarrett, typically. Like, <laughs> so if, that's not if, like if an you impressive were like, fact. If you're like Joe, rank wrestlers. Okay, let's rank wrestlers real quick, right? You're like, rank wrestlers. Joe, rank The Undertaker. I'm ranking The Undertaker like, I don't know. Like eight eight point five out of ten or something, right? Because like he's so good and he's got the presence and he's longevity and legend and on the microphone his character. So like I give the Undertaker like an eight five or a nine. Maybe the Undertaker's a nine. I don't know. Not quite though. I think eight five because he's wrestling, but he's can have these really great matches sometimes. It's so amazing sometimes. So I don't know, man. Like eight five, eight 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 for the Undertaker. You know, for me, Shawn Michaels is like a 9'5", because he can get on the microphone back in the day, and and his mic skills dropped over the years, but whatever. You know, Sh Sh Bret Hart is like an 8'5", you know, it's like his mic skills weren't always the best, he didn't have the best promos unless he was heel, which was rare, but his matches were so fucking good, he's an 8'5", or something. And you're like, where's Edge rank on your list, Joe? I'd give I'd, Edge ranks at a 7 for me. Well, guess what? Christian ranks at like a 5 or a 6, so... Yeah, Christian's never been a standout. That, that's why I'm just saying. Like, that's I'm, why they overhyped really it. They overhyped it. Like, that's they fucked I'm up. I'm surprised they chose Christian. That that's the surprise for me. I'm just I I didn't expect to see Christian be in AEW. He's just not that much of a draw. And God knows what they paid him. We'll find out. Hopefully, by out of nowhere. And this Big week, Show but. is better. Like Big Show is better. Paul White is oh, bigger. Oh, exactly. And you I, won't I said believe in the chat, who's you know, coming. And others. If people you are happy, believe. be happy. You can enjoy this just because it's something I don't or you don't care for. It doesn't mean let us shit on your parade. But I feel like this is, is more detrimental to AEW in the long run than making a few select fans happy. I, I think it's more... I, I honestly think this was detrimental in the short run. I'm actually the opposite. I think tonight I'm angry, and over the next couple of weeks it will be okay again because then hopefully he'll start to be booked cool and he'll be all right. So everything will be fine. I think tonight is the freak out. Tonight is the freak out night where I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm, I'm delusional, right? Like right now I'm delusional. I'm not thinking straight. I'm furious because I can't you, believe it. You're not this. wrong there. Yeah. Cause I mean, obviously you have the initial, uh, you know, anger to, to deal with. I'm right there with you. Cause everything was bad tonight. It, it really was. Or, or everything was either the bad or The only thing that we didn't blah. talk about that wasn't bad that I saved for last was the Hangman, Adam Page, and Matt Hardy match. It wasn't great. It wasn't you know, anything to write home about, but it was decent. Well, that's and a good point. And now the feud is over. It's a good point, Jake, because you know what? Out of everything... That's my favorite match of the night, and it's not even anything that I'm like going to remember tomorrow. Well, like, like put it this way. Out of everything, I thought that match was going to be a five or a six. Right, maybe. I thought it was actually going to be a little bit less because I figured there would be more outside interference. So I would give that match, though, because the match was kind of all right. It was like a 6, 5, or a 7-ish. Like, yeah. that's what I thought. And then at the end, I at first was upset. I didn't want to see the Dark Order people out there. I kind of got angry. But then it actually kind of was awesome. And then the ending was fun. So then yeah, I, where so, they, they catch him and they throw him back up for the buckshot lariat that Matt had worked so hard to, to not let him hit the entire match. And 
you know, the, the Dark Order did actually save him there when you think about it, because if had he fallen back on his back, he either wouldn't have made it back into the match in time to be counted out, or that would have finished the injury on his shoulder so he couldn't hit his finisher. So it was an effective thing. I'm not big into the money mat gimmick. I didn't like it much in TNA. Like compared to to what we've seen in, in AEW so far, it's it's not one of my, you know, most hated gimmicks. I really didn't like the way the broken thing worked out, but still I'd rather just have Matt Hardy uh, at this point. The ending was was really good though. I do like the Dark Order. I know you're not excited about them, but made me miss Brody even more tonight. I really wish Well, it was he just was that's there. that's the thing is like the Brody stuff is what makes me like them a lot now. I'm like yeah. I'm thinking about I, I liked like, them you know. be- before the Brody stuff cuz I, I do like Silver and Reynolds. I like them on just, YouTube. Yeah. It's it's progressed. I don't like them and, on AEW though. Well, that's the thing. It's it's it hasn't really, you know, conveyed what they do on the other YouTube shows on the See, Dynamite show. I thought and that's, that that's match, a big issue. I thought that match was maybe a 7, right? Or a six, five, or a seven, and because I thought it was going to be a six or a five, that is the only match, right? That's the only match that exceeded that, expectations, that, right? That didn't l- fall below the bar. You know why? Because it had a fun ending, and the right guy went over. Yeah, and it's two guys. That, I don't know. And it like, was it was a proper conclusion to a decently built story. And it was like the you match saw these was... guys team together. Then they had their falling out when Matt tried to screw him over and got caught and got screwed himself. And now, you know, the, 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 you go ahead and Matt wins all the money. He's with Dark Order. He's, you know, is he actually going to join them? We don't know, but at least there's more to it. And him and Matt can finally split ways, so that's good as well. Here you made a lot of promises. This is the biggest signing we get Christian which is not a needle mover and sucks. You get the spooty explosion at the end and Kingston sold it like he got shot by M16. There are Disney rides with bigger explosions than that. Trash. JD Venom, one of our oldest donators and biggest donators ever. Thank you for the Ocho, brother. And yes, I agree 100% with everything you said. I think a lot of people do too. We got a poll on Twitter. It's not looking good for AEW. That's the worst poll I've Why ever was seen Eddie for Kingston AEW. Knocked out. The ring didn't even fucking explode. Was that a botched or terrible sell by Kingston? No, it was a botch. I'm not mad that it's Christian. We know he will be great in AU. But I'm mad that they hyped the shit out of it to be fucking Christian. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the I, botch I, wasn't Eddie though. The, the Eddie. explosion was the botch. I don't yeah. blame Eddie because he was doing what he was supposed to do, which was close his eyes, cover up. So he knew what he was doing to keep from getting the smoke in his eyes and all those other things. And being that close, it could still be loud. I mean, yeah, so he might not know that it didn't have this huge effect right away, and he's not going to look up and be like, "Oh, let me watch the pyro." He's another professional, you know, consummate professional that really tried to sell it. He continued to act even after he knew shit went to hell. Yeah, so. yeah. I tip my hat to you, Eddie. Yeah. I don't blame Eddie for this at all. Show was a huge letdown. That ending was so embarrassing and air you should be embarrassed too. Kermack coming in. Yeah, I, I thought they should have debuted me. I told them sign Ryback, but they didn't. Just do hire it. Gang Grow and then replace Edge's character with Ryback. Dude, I would have been more. And that'll hyped. be the new brood. I would be more hyped for Gang Grell. I'd be more hyped for Alistair Black and Zelina Vega, Thea Trinidad. That Maybe. that to me would have would have been more exciting because I like the Shit idea of the bomb. younger talent and build them up. There so. you is going backwards, SMH. A lot of people yeah. saying that tonight. That was Scooter, the U-Smith, chiming in. AEW going backwards. A lot of people feel that way. I, I don't think this is going to be a permanent issue. I think this is just one Scooter, bad thanks, overview. man. TJ Jones says, Christian versus Jericho versus Shelton Benjamin versus Edge versus Orton. Come on, Joe. Hey, guess what, TJ Jones, you fucking asshat? Put some respect on my fucking name. Wow, so the guy had to have six other people in the match with him? This guy sucks unless there's 70 people in a match. 
Come up with a fucking one-on-one match where the guy fucking had a good match. Can someone name a match where Christian had a fucking good one-on-one match? Really? Fucking name something. I can't. I can't name a match where Gangrel really had a match where like he was that either. So like no. I it's fine. That's my point though. The fuck are you saying, TJ? Yeah, for WWE there's I'm gonna not snap. Like a big Christian what what's a feud with Christian that stands out? What when he took on Randy Orton after he he won the title, then he lost it like what, the next day or two days later? It doesn't stick out to me. I don't know anything well, about that. Saying, and then all he did was he had a decent run building up to that, and then they had him do this stupid cowardly I need one more match and always asking for one more chance, one more chance. They ruined him when they had good momentum with him, especially after Edge being forced to retire. They had this really sympathetic like run they could have done with Christian and they just they ruined it. So him and Orton wasn't great. Uh I I book Booker T, yeah, I don't know. Like there's there's not many things that stand out for Christian. Him and Jericho at WrestleMania is probably like the biggest match I can think of when they had him Kiss Tristratus on the stage. What was that? Mania eighteen. Yeah, I think that I was. I, I, everything Christian did at Mania was terrible. The DDP match. Oh my god. Could be seventeen. That I can't was think. whatever. But, uh, it was. Apparently, Joe as well tonight. Already, you know, the, the pay per view was a bit of a shit show, but people couldn't even pay for it to watch it. People couldn't had. They were having tons of issues with BR Live just paying for the stream, and then several people, including staff, were having issues just logging in to watch it. And then the stream went down quite a bunch of times. It was WrestleMania twenty. Thank you. Oh, that's why my brain sucks, and I'm terrible with numbers. But yeah, you know, I, I I think that's terrible. People spent a lot of money, and we give WWE Network tons of shit when that happens. Now we've got to look forward to the switch to Peacock, and what happens for Fastlane. I'm hoping that that's not a total disaster either. But this would Christian's a great signing again if it's like a surprise or they're like, hey, um, you know, we're going to be announcing a couple signings Sunday night. We're going to be announcing a couple signings to AEW. And, um, you know, you can find out about those by tuning into the pay-per-view and uh, check it out. And there's going to be all this crazy stuff going on, like blah, blah. And that's it. But instead they were like, we are signing a huge announcement. It's coming. Oh, my God. The big, the big, And the big show, Paul White, is the one who's saying this, that I'm going to be there for the signing of this amazing person. Like, So you're like, wow, oh, my God, he's so big that the fucking Paul White is the one that's going to give out the fucking secret. So this is crazy because he's got to be bigger than Paul White. Yeah, you know, he's got to be bigger. Paul White? Nobody, literally. But guess what? Paul White is better than Christian. And Paul White has had more memorable matches than Christian singles wise. Cuz I, I was Tony Khan, I would have I would have gone ahead, I would have on Wednesday, surprise, not not go ahead and pre-announce. I would go ahead and if I was going to do it that way, I would have Christian come out and say he's in the ladder match. Okay, he's the surprise, and he's going to introduce someone that's going to be joining, and then they could set up and have less expectations with Big Show by saying someone that's going to be, yes, he'll be wrestling and signing a full-time contract, oh. but he's also going to be on the commentary team for AEW Dark, you know, Elevation, Evolution, whatever the hell it is, and, you know, at least then people might have, they still would have tuned in to see, I think, but not with, oh. with the massive expectations. They'd be like, all right, someone that is a wrestler, but they're also going to be on commentary, so they're not going to be full-time, but it's still a very big deal. And They could have really sold it that way, I think, and, and just tempered expectations. Maybe I didn't watch Christian during this. I wasn't watching WWE during this time because there was a eight-month to a year where I stopped watching. And TJ Jones is Christian versus Jericho. I don't remember yeah. it. Don't remember it. Christian versus That's Shelton. what I was talking about at Mania. Christian versus Let's Shelton Benjamin. I don't remember that. Christian versus. I think they fought for a tight IC title, maybe, or there was. I believe that was. I think Christian and Edge was all right, or like the stuff he did. Remember when it was supposed to be Hardy being attacked by, by somebody or someone? Remember someone was supposed to be attacked, and we thought it should have been Christian coming from TNA, but then it turned out to be his brother instead. And then yeah, they had it Matt Hardy. being Matt. That was it, or Jeff was attacking, or Matt yeah, was so attacking Jeff. That, yeah, I, I remember that was the most interesting time I ever had with Christian as a solo guy. I was like, Christian's gonna come from TNA, and he's the one who attacked Jeff and tried to blow him up or whatever, tried to blow yeah. up Matt Hardy. And then he just came back, and it wasn't 
anything to do with that. So nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, listen, I don't he did know. have some good runs, like I said, with the with the world heavyweight title, and then they turned him into this, like I said, crybaby, where he's oh, it's one more match, it's one more match, it's one, and it just made him look really weak and pathetic, and and especially coming after Edge retiring, they had all this sympathy. So the point is, it's not the point is that he's not bad. It's the point that. This was he was never a top star. He's not, he was never he's yes. not a talent. You, you can't go to the street and say if I go to the street and ask ten people who Brock Lesnar or CM Punk is, I guarantee maybe six of them know. But if I say Christian, maybe two, maybe one. I mean, a lot maybe, of people maybe none. A lot of people may know who he is because of the Attitude Era time, and you could actually probably say some name. Yeah, but, but, I, I don't know. But like, in a general sense, like today's wrestling fans, you know, the, the people that they're going for with that demographic probably haven't seen Christian or barely watched the the beginning. Their beginning into wrestling was the end of his his WWE or TNA days. I'm gonna have a heart attack tonight. Dunkachino. I'm gonna have a heart don't attack. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> What's my name? James Dunk Gentry. Gino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Air, you can't recover from this. WWE is still the king. Can't wait for Boomer Cornette to crap in this. I really, actually, <laughs> I can't wait for Cornette to crap on it, but I do love AEW, so I don't believe that. I think WWE is losing ratings every week, and they're fucking spiraling down to hell, so that's really not WWE true. WWE might have a bit more than, than AEW, but when you look at it, the, the demographic is, is pretty damn close, and AEW's increasing ratings pretty much regularly, so... Again, like, I am crapping on this tonight. I love AEW, though. I'm just... This this deserves to be shit on tonight. Shit, I'm genuinely just very pissed off with how Easily the worst PPV out. that you have put on. That ending was the best summary of this PPV. Exactly. Total <laughs> joke. None of this was worth the hype and the fans chanting refund was validated. Right. Three tenths, yes, I'm serious. Yes. Soundwave, you're you're so right. Soundwave ninety two, thank you for the ten dollar super chat. The check. fans yeah, I, chanted uh, refund at an yeah. AEW show. Never thought I'd see that. Honestly. I, I thought the fans were too smart. The fans like, risked the their lives. Like smart marks, you know. I didn't think they'd do that to AEW, but we risk our lives to see sparklers go off. But not that's a, the thing. The whole night was terrible. I'm telling you, man. The whole night was bad. Fuck the sparklers. Fuck the death match. Everything else was terrible anyway. Yeah, but that's that's the thing. Like even if we didn't have this death match, it still yeah. wasn't a great night. Yeah. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. Christian and Ethan Page were let down, but at least the camera work on the Sting match was good. Four tenths. Sir Huggington's dropping a four out of ten <laughs> for us tonight. See, I, I actually didn't like the camera work in the cinematic match. I thought it was one of the 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 more infuriating uh camera works for cinematic matches wow and i was surprised i didn't think it would be that way but between the commentary i like the setting i like the location i like the people involved but just it looked like the everything beginning, that they did with it it looked like the down. beginning building for the war zone wwe yeah, raw in 1998 it, it, it was you know they went to the war zone warehouse and you know broke into wwf's uh look good raw intro i like the setting that was cool it looked like a bad video. I love Kenny Omega and I love you, but this PPV was bad. And that ending was garbage. Is this the Moxley Elimination Chamber? What a joke, Lamau WTF happened tonight. <laughs> DID or Twitch get deleted? I don't believe so, but I mean, you never know. Maybe I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, no, you you change your name because it's no longer. Oh yeah, Jed, I changed JTS. my name. Uh, it's Evil Spectrum Three on Twitch now. It's not JCS anymore, Jet. Thank you, Jet. You're right, by the way. What you said. Did is you right. just donate to Joe? JG yeah. Venom. Did you just donate to Joe? Thank you for the donation, and because you donated, I'm going to feast myself. Go ahead and fist in the it. Bung hole. Go ahead in the bung hole. <laughs> What's for dinner? Uh, to add to this as well, imagine if WWE did this tonight and everyone in the world would shit on it. Minus some people including you and Jake a lot of people on Twitter likes this show. Wyatt and Orton had more balls at least Wyatt was legit on fire for a bit. JD Venom, thanks for the $10. Yeah, in the end the Fiend thing with Randy Orton was better than this. Yeah, 
It and was. I never said that CM Punk is a household name either. I j- and I didn't say the fans of AW. I said if you went out and asked ten people, you know, maybe maybe you know a certain amount would know Punk or Lesnar, but I they're not going to know Christian. Yeah, that's I, my. I point. wouldn't even. That's my thing is I wouldn't even get stuck on that. I would just get stuck on the fact that they overhyped a mid card guy. They overhyped a mid card guy like insane, like he was the next coming of fucking something crazy. And it was just fucking Christian, who is not shocking that he's going to AEW. Like, not shocking at all. The guy was in TNA for a while. And then in WWE, it's not fucking shocking. Well, well, maybe when I said surprising, it wasn't that he's there. It's the fact that they took him when they could probably have so many other people. It's like, what did they see in him that they would get out that would be a ratings value? You know, that's what I'm wondering. Because it's not like Christian's terrible. He's just not a mover. He's not going to move the ratings needle that they that they need. They need a Punk or a Lesnar at this point. They do. I'm sorry. They do. To get fresh eyes on the product, they need a big name that, that transcends, you know, in, into different cultures and, and, you know, different genres. They need someone that, that is popular with more than just a wrestling audience. They did a little bit of that with Shaq. Then they had Shaq disappear out of the ambulance like he had powers. So not not a great ending to, to what was a, a great moment with Shaq and Cody. But I, they need some of these bigger names to really boost up some of the ratings. And they need to start going ahead and really focusing on on building their stars up. Absolutely. I can't wait Seeing, to hear the media. It looked scrum. like Jake Roberts got legitimately injured tonight. I mean, he was blown up from the one move. Poor guy is very old and, and had a very hard life, so doesn't need to be wrestling. But the fact that he got in the ring involved at all was was pretty crazy. Doesn't need to happen. Right. I'm sorry. He doesn't need to be getting physical. I think that's a little ridiculous. That's my take on it. Not everybody's, but I don't think it's needed. Let's go to, uh, you want to hear from Tony Khan? Oh, let's hear from Tony. We're all lucky uh, that the bomb going off at the end didn't really hurt anybody, that Kenny's big... Uh, master plan that he that he built a dud, which I think who would have thought when he drew up the big plan with crayons that maybe the bomb might not fail to fail to take both guys out. So uh, I thought that uh, the the for the battle it really delivered uh, excellent action. Both guys came out okay, which is great because on paper it looked like the kind of match where somebody could get hurt. Thanks, Tony. Up next is Sean Lalos of CBR, followed by Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated. Congrats on the, the great pay-per-view again tonight, Tony. Thanks, man. Um, what a suck-up liar, idiot. Darby Allen earlier talked about... Congratulations on the ring, man. <laughs> he said he put in about 90%. See, I could be doing this. You won't catch me sucking dick, though, guys. I could have been on this fucking shit. And I would have, had, emails. and I'd have to be talking good about the company, like a hundred percent good all the time. Look out for the people who talk a hundred percent good about every company. All right, you know they're on the payroll somewhere. I'm not on anybody's payroll. I shit on WWE eight out of ten times, and I shit on AEW eh, only a couple times. But like, this is one of those nights where we're shitting on it. Exactly, they deserve to be shit on tonight, but not all the time. They've made entertaining decisions. Yeah, Usually on Wednesdays, they're, they're the thing that we look forward Dude, to we, the most. Like, like some of the people too that, that are the tonight that have been like, "You're a shill for WWE. You hate AEW." Listen, you obviously don't watch my show. You know why? Because literally Wednesday, we talked about how epic the fucking show was. It was yeah. epic, epic. You don't watch me. You don't watch you me. Bragged you bragged about me how to, awesome of a debut oh, Shaq and oh, Jade had. Oh, it was all so and, good. Shaq and Jade were great. We said it would be good probably, but it was even better. We couldn't believe how good it went off. So, dude, listen. Now, like, Go watch my reviews. You're clearly yeah, a exactly. noob. You're a S- noob. Seth Negan brought up a great point. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Joe, but uh, the Dudley Boys and LAX, it was locked down uh, 2007 in TNA, and they had an electrified steel cage match. Did you ever see that match? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that total shit show of a, a disaster. Yep. Again, when you try and add, you know, these type of stipulations, they the when it's done live and you can't add theatrics to it, it doesn't work. It hardly ever is conveyed properly. These things need to be edited and added to. I mean, look when they had the 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 chain. I don't of think they need they, to be edited. To. I don't think that they just need to do a good job of it. They didn't do that. I, I don't think that you don't need to edit know, it. They needed to have the pyro because it it always goes wrong. It I, just you know. I don't. I 
don't agree. I've seen the pyro look awesome. Like they just fucked I, it up. I, I, get another like double up on all the pyro. Like get they're it. They're right. gonna have to going forward if they ever try it again. But this was. Uh, but listen, it, I also like the idea that they could turn into a story of Kenny Kenny saying, "I'm Kenny Omega. I'm smart. I knew." And I'm just gonna repeat this quickly because it's like my narrative of this whole thing. Um, Kenny Omega didn't want to blow himself up. So he did. He didn't have the thing be dangerous because he was actually he's actually scared of that. He doesn't say that, but he says, "I'm not stupid. I'm not going to blow myself up." So I let Moxley think that the ring was going to blow up at the end, so he would rush, make mistakes like he did, and I would capitalize on it like I did. And I'm still the champion because when it when it comes down to it, I'm the better wrestler, and more importantly, I'm even smarter than John Moxley. And now everyone's mad. You got robbed of seeing the ring exploding. And this crazy thing, Eddie Kingston thought his friend was going to die. And Moxley did rush in the match. We saw it. You can actually show the replay. He was rushing true. for covers. So, And when they hit the 10-minute timer and they started playing the countdown music, they went ahead and they had him act like a fool then too because he was trying yes. to hurry and he makes mistakes. That That's fine. Exactly. They, 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 the only problem is that the, the Eddie part of it is the unfortunate. No, side the Eddie here. part's fine. Eddie, they well, can explain it. They can explain it. But for right now, right. tonight, until they explain it, it looks like shit. All until e they justify it Wednesday as a whole tonight, we can come up with whatever you know, excuse we want to give them. It will be easily it done. Was bad because it was Eddie Kingston, bad. Eddie Kingston can sell it so well. He can come out in the ring. So I guess everybody wants to talk about uh, what happened. I just got out of the hospital yesterday, and I and I've been cleared, so it's okay for me to be here. And he talks about how he had some kind of he f he basically fainted in the ring. He's like, yeah. "Listen, I'm Cardio a man." Cardio fraction because he stressed himself stupid. Yes, he's Perfect. like, "I'm a man, and I've never been. I thought my friend was gonna die. I'm at home with my mother who's sick. I thought my mother was gonna die this week. I think my best friend is gonna die this week. I thought my best friend was gonna die in the middle of the ring before he ever saw his kid. And you think that's funny? You think that's funny? You didn't. You didn't even ever plan for the ring to blow up." And you think you think it's you? Oh, I'm gonna embarrass people. Well, let me yeah. tell you something. You haven't seen embarrassment. You haven't seen danger. You scared to blow up in that ring. Now you should be scared to die by my hands because Kenny Omega, you are gonna die, suffer, and die again, my friend. Like, and then he just he goes into this fucking promo, and it's like, oh my god, he it saves everything. It makes Kenny look like a scumbag, and he's a coward too because he didn't want to blow yeah. up. Moxley was ready to blow up in a ring. Kenny wasn't. So it's exactly. oh god, dude, it's so perfect if they just do all of this that way. But they maybe they, they maybe they won't though. Kenny to or, or Moxley to the ropes, you know, because why Eddie wouldn't have just, just dragged, dragged him, him by the, the feet? Yes, yes. Firemen carry him. I mean, there's so many things that just look bad. If the timer was lower and he got in there at three seconds and couldn't have time to drag him out, that's that would have looked better. You know, they should have beat him on the stage until they got to like the five second mark. He gets in there, tries to drag him, then lays on him. Like they tried to do that, but he had too much time in the ring. He could have picked him up and dragged him. We've seen him lift him dead weight to throw him on the thumbtacks. I think he can go ahead and lift him out of the ring to survive the explosion. But again, you know, if they say he had an anxiety attack or, you know, some, whatever, fine, good. They can sell this, they can save it. But for tonight, they fucked up bad real bad and yeah he I, had a heart I, attack he had a heart attack or anxiety you gave me a freaking heart attack because i thought my friend was gonna fucking die in the fucking ring yeah, i'm the only one to that. take be Eddie, i'm the only Eddie, one to take care of my mother i'm the only one that can take care of my mother and you almost killed me by making me think my friend was gonna die and left my mother alone i'm gonna fucking kill you kenny omega like that shit exactly oh kingston's my God, the it's only crazy. one and now you get moxley to stay away sell the injury and you can keep kenny busy until the next pay-per-view when you build up his next challenger in the interim he can face moxley and it works you know or not moxley excuse me uh kingston and it works and Tony Khan talking again in the post interview is saying that Christian is one of the best wrestlers of the last couple of decades. Christian gave them a call, wanted to come to AEW, and wants to wrestle regularly. So that's what they see in him. Thank you, JR, for letting they us know. But producing and getting the, his, his match done. He's an independent filmmaker and a wrestler. Talk a little bit about what he brings to the product when it comes to producing, directing, and putting together all these incredible 
promos and vignettes that he puts together for you guys. I'm really glad you asked. Uh, Darby's a really great, gifted young filmmaker, and I'm so glad you used that term to describe him because that's the term I used to describe Darby also. He's a great <laughs> filmmaker. And, and I thought that was the worst part of all. So I, I don't disagree with you or agree with you. I, I don't really know how I feel. I actually I just didn't care. Yeah. No, I, I, I think I kind of liked Darby's cut or whatever he did of it. I, I, um, I wasn't. I went to school for film. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I sort of see. What Darby Allen's doing? Not, by the way, I, that doesn't mean anything because I went to school for him. I've just what I mean yeah. by that is I've seen a lot of filmmakers or people yeah. who wanted to be filmmakers, and I've seen so many videos from so many different people. And so, if that's him that did all that, I think he is pretty good with the vignettes. I don't, I don't think they're the. I don't yet can't. He's talented. It just didn't fit for me in a wrestling angle. I, I don't. It looked more like a music I don't know video how than it was, did. But I don't know how it was any different than the Undertaker stuff or the Matt Hardy deletion stuff. It's well, the same I mean, that to me. with some of the angles they had, it, it took a bit out of the action for me, and some of the pacing, and, and like I said as well, having all the extra people show up from the non-physical side of it. Like I said, so the non-technical side. But I, I don't know, they, like the, the staging for the intro, it, it's not awful, but it just. But it, I'm, I don't know. I guess I, I am. I'm not really worried about that much. It didn't. I never. I'm not I, worried about it. I just like. I didn't think. Care I think the WWE it. Raw filming is worse than what I saw in in the Derby match. Like the WWE Raw filming when matches. Yeah, the editing is is not even editing. More, not editing. Just the live cut. The live. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're live editing the when they go ahead shooting. and they go from shot to shot to shot. Yeah, and you miss half of the action for. You know, fake Thunderdome reactions and whatnot. So that's yeah, that why awful stuff. I'm not upset at all, or I don't have anything negative to say about it. I don't think Darby is some amazing guy that I've never seen before, but I think he's pretty good. So, like, if I was Tony Khan, I'd be happy that, like, hey, Darby will, Darby can do all the, like, then we'll film over here and come around there and we'll do that. Fine. I think he was fine. It was, it was fine, like, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. The worst thing I saw was when Sting threw a bat at a guy and then the guy ducked and it didn't hit him. And then Sting was allowed to walk 40 feet around a cube to get to the guy and then pick up his own bat next to the guy and then swing it at the guy. Why didn't the guy, what's his name? I don't even remember the guy's name. Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks. He's fucking, I can't even remember his name. He's so generic. But uh, Ricky <laughs> Starks, why did Ricky Starks? But he's Starks not either. That's the thing, Joe. That's the problem with so much of this, as we said before. Oh, I, I like BTE uh, Dark Order. You don't like Dark Order on Dynamite. I like Ricky Starks on Dark on commentary. He's friggin' amazing. He's so funny. He's very charismatic and entertaining. He's got a good personality about himself. We yeah. never see it. We don't get these these moments or, or any type of connection with most of the stars. They expect you to know everything. You are supposed to be an encyclopedia of wrestling knowledge. Maki Ito is coming out tonight. The fans there are elated. That's a bigger surprise than Christian for most people. Everybody's right. happy. She, uh, who is this? All right, we saw her in the Eliminator Tournament. But, you know, again, we've, we've, we've done it so many times with AEW. The Butcher, The Blade, we've got Sean Spears, we've got Jake Hager, we've got... Who you don't you don't know because you're you know changing what it is? people's names. You know what gonna... I, you know what it is, Jake. I honestly believe this. I think there's five hundred thousand people. I'm gonna say this. I think okay. I'm gonna change. I think there's three hundred to five hundred thousand people who are like super dork wrestling fans who know all the little moves know all the New Japan people, and they're super into everything, and they watch everything. And by the way, Tony Khan is like this, which is, this is not a bad thing, but my no. point is Tony Khan is He's such booking for what he likes, just a knowledgeable like booking guy. He knows everybody. So the problem is, though, he's booking for those 300,000 wrestling fans out there who do know those people and know that they've been in LAWX and REWE and whatever else, other things. He knows that, and 300,000 other obsessed wrestling fans know that. But the problem is, not only does everybody else not know that, 
but 70% of your audience doesn't know that. And that's the problem. I fucking figured it out because of the way you just described that. That's fucking what this is. He's a super fan dork, which is okay because, I mean, I'm a dork too. I'm a big uh, we, dork. We all have but, a great but for wrestling. But, but Jake, I'm not that insane because I'm watching WWE right now and I'm watching AEW. Once in a blue moon, I see something from Impact. I don't really watch Ring of Honor anymore and I yeah, don't, don't really watch time. New Japan anymore. So you don't because watch NXT of that, UK. I don't even watch NXT Stardom UK and right, you know, <laughs> Noah right. and all these, you know, Japanese they are Super Dragon. They're yeah, fucking Noah, you know, booking. We're not doing it. So. They're booking Super Dragon for those people. AW, I don't know. We'll see. But garbage. I, I I know they have the forbidden door open. Are we, you know, like like uh, who just said it? If before? I hear that That's again, I'm going to kill somebody. If I hear that again, I'm going to kill somebody. I don't stop saying that. Stop saying the forbidden door is open. It doesn't fucking matter. Nobody gives a shit. 300,000 people care. Nobody else does. Unless, if Okada walks out, okay, I'll be hyped if Okada walks out. That's it. Everybody be else, Chung Lao Fao, the, the Dung Bing Lang. still going to be clueless. I don't care. Stop it. They're still going to be clueless, Joe. They're not going to know. That's the problem. And, 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 you know, Seth Negan said Al Snow's there. So does this mean we'll see them work with a OVW? Because they still have a really good training facility. They work with everybody else. So probably, I'm sure that's why they were there to have some form of a working relationship. But like you said, if they, they had Kenta here, they proved their point. It didn't do anything for ratings. It didn't make the fans go nuts. It, you know, uh, there was a small portion of fans that were like, oh, my God, this is great. You know, we, we're finally working with New Japan. But... Overall, it wasn't a, a huge deal. Not like they thought it was going to be. Like you said, if they get some big name, okay. But we haven't seen that yet. They who, have who's to get the bigger name? First. Who do you? Hey, hey, do you like Bill Harlton? Do you know who Bill Harlton is, uh, Jake? No, he's a comedian. Do you know? Oh. Who, do you know who Carlos Mencia is? I do. Carlos Mencia ripped him off a bunch. Ah, see. Do you know who Bill Hicks is? You kind of know who yes. Bill Hicks is, probably. But do you know who Dennis yes. Leary is? Of course. Who's the biggest star, Bill Hicks or Dennis Leary? Dennis Leary would be the bigger star, but... He ripped off Bill Hicks, right? Mm -hmm. So, Kenta, Absolutely. great, you do the fucking go to sleep. CM Punk's the bigger star. Yeah. Who cares? Who gives Absolutely. a fuck? I, lo I respect the fuck out of Kenta. I love Kenta. Uh, but and, I don't... And but didn't, not really. You know, like, he really... So what? What does he do? And then having him in NXT as a day with Tommy, he got injured a bunch. So every time they started to push him, he got injured, unfortunately. And it just, they, they never could work it out. And they tried to push him initially. And then a few other times he got injured and just plans always fell to the side. And, and so then he left and became Kenta again. And it just didn't bring anything up. But that's a great point. You know, you, you, whoever is, is the one to make it popularized doesn't matter who came up with it. So I appreciate the. I, listen, I think that it's great because we know who a lot of these people are, but even I don't know a lot of the stuff. And one of the things that I notice is a lot of it just doesn't translate well. It just doesn't. When you see a couple of people in New Japan have a crazy match, you're there for New Japan and it works in New Japan. But when you bring people over from there, a lot of times it doesn't work here. It just doesn't work. And, and you end up saying, like, what's the big hype? And that's what other people say, right? Like, me and you were like, oh, shit, Kent is here. Here we go. And But then I hear every person that says, oh, shit, cool, Kent is here. A lot of other people start saying, I don't get it. Or, like, I don't even know who this guy is. Or they well, that's say, the thing tonight, I heard he for, was For there. every 10 tweets I got, you know, let's say there was three people being like, Maki Ito. The other seven were like, who? That, yes. That's, that's the problem. So... And then you had everybody excited for the Christian thing that or for the announcement, and then ended up being Christian. You saw the disappointment there. Like you said, Vince books for himself. We see that all the time, where we get something that is so ridiculous, but it's what Vince likes. So that's the reason we got that booking. With Tony, it's the same way. Obviously, yes. if I was booking, I'm going to do what I want to see. I'm going to, you know, oh, I want MJF to win. He's going to win because it's my decision. I don't know if Tony is quite at the what's best for business phase yet. I don't think so. It is important to say that I think that Tony Khan has made way more good decisions than bad. And, and check this out, too. Vince McMahon actually called Paul White to say, you're a very valuable asset. I wish you a ton of luck, and I thank you for everything you've ever done for WWE and that there's no animosity. 
Well, that's good. Vince should that's call great. him. So Vince is, you know, not petty, at least up front. For him to be able to call Paul White, he made the effort. That's huge. So I think he really wants to leave on a good foot so that everybody doesn't have bad blood with him well, inside Vince, WWE. I think Vince is getting older. He's seen, you know, Macho Man pass away, you know, Ultimate Warrior pass away, right, as they got to share a good moment. You yeah. know, for the first time, he felt bad about the DVD and the things that they did. And I think Vince is at the age now where even though he's a badass, Vince is a crazy guy. I think Vince is at the point where he's starting to realize, like, man, people die and people things go bad. You never know who you're not going to see again tomorrow. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's I, I'm going to absolutely call this guy and say, you know, what I think. Where you know, and in the past he'd done that too. Even when he, you know, even back in the day, but like, but not not with everybody at all, and only with a very select few, I believe. So, it's uh, no, that makes sense. Listen, I mean, again, everybody should kind of do that, you know, because it's like you really don't. I mean, like, is is their business or your business worth more than you uh, telling your feelings to a friend or somebody that you were friendly with for a long time or shared a part of your life? It's like, no, man, it's worth you know, wish having good wishes before something bad happens or, or, or in 15 years, you didn't really talk much, but 15 years later, the guy dies, but you're like, yeah. we only talked a couple of times in those 15 years, but I, I, you know, at least you had those that good out. You don't want to have a bad fucking decision or Dunkachino. Don't mind if I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate, chocolate blend. Tony Khan problem is he seems to want a big name to draw attention but getting old stars not even superstars who are husbands and nobody wants to see. Well, Scooter, I think the other problem is there's not a lot out there. Um, that that's a everybody signed. It's it's not like it used to be. People used to have short term contracts that you wouldn't see anything longer than what Joe three years was like a big deal. Right. I mean, that's typically now you see five year contracts, 10 year contracts in some instances, but a lot of five years, big money deals. And you never saw mid carters getting you know, anywhere near a million dollars for three I years. I really hate this because I love where you him so pensive face. Yeah, James Mesner. A lot of people are just sad at, at this point. Now people are in the sad phase yeah. where we're like, we feel bad because we love AEW. But, and I love Tony Khan. I kind of love Tony Khan. He's made a few mistakes we've criticized. We think they're mistakes. But, but he's done a lot of great things. But tonight we've only got one more stage to go. This was so, this is a full. We, we were in denial. We we didn't want to believe it happened. Then we were angry. Then we tried to reason with them. Be like Tony, come mm -hmm. on, you could fix this. We could we could just say that that Eddie went. You know, Eddie Eddie had a heart attack, and then <laughs> uh, we 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 were now depressed about it. Then yeah. all that's left, Joe, is to accept it, and we've made it through the five stages of grief. We, so. This is really what we're going through. It's very strange. Shit bomb. Very weird. This felt like Hell in a Cell 2019 sucked. This was their Hell in a Cell 2019 a little bit. Not quite, but a little bit. Alex Oli. Oh, no definitely. Doubt. Getting chance for refunds. I mean, that was definitely the worst of the two. The, the, the Fiend losing and having you know the fans go just total apeshit there, but... This was this was still bad. Uh, DJ really DJ bad. Scandalous, I do think Christian can have good matches. The problem is is just this wasn't the spot to be in tonight to say this big name's coming and that's what it was it, that was a mistake. That's the mistake. It's not Christian being in AEW. It's just the way they hyped it is was wrong. They they fucked up in a way. Although they suck Shit at bomb. a lot of people buy their money, so. Did you enjoy AEW Sparkle? I mean, man, sex under fireworks is one way to end the show, I guess. It was, dude. It was like, uh, like it was like, or play like the Dawson's Creek song, dude. It was like they were laying on a blanket at the town fair, and they yeah. Both, well, that's why I said they when, both when just came out of the, the closet. Theme, yeah, but they, that they, killed they me. dude. They came out of the fucking closet, and then <laughs> they finally kissed at the fair, and they didn't care who saw it. That's right. It was their own version of the Notebook. That's what it was like. Yeah, it was like the notebook. Like, where's that fu unchained melody? Mm -hmm. That's what I heard in my head while they were laying there. Oh, I heard careless whisper. Yeah, got George Michael. Don't mind if I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm, I'm your friend. friend. Say hello to my, my chocolate blend.
Eh, uh, you couldn't get Jeff Hardy or Edge, so they got Matt Hardy and Christian. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, COVID-1984, what's up? That's my birth year. Um, unfortunately, um, what the wait, what was the first part? AW couldn't get Jeff Hardy or Jeff Edge. Jeff Hardy or Edge, yeah. So they got Matt well, Hardy and Christian. Unfortunately, Matt Hardy's best stuff is uh, as a broken person and we yeah. didn't get broken person. but that doesn't work without fans in the audience so i don't entirely blame matt for that it was terrible timing his debut brody's debut happened the week they had no fans Over finally it was wcw 2021 let's <laughs> sign all wwe old washed up talent how'd it work out for wcw and nay this was worse than i for i match shot to see black heart made fun of it on twitter GLSD someone in W. Shotzi Blackheart made fun of it. Glad someone in WWE has balls to fire back. Alexa, sweet ass. Thank you. Yeah, it's it, it's like, again, the worst thing wasn't even the explosion at the end. That was just the hilarious cherry on top or the bonus, the frosting on the cake. You know, it's not even, that's what's, where are we in this? Are we that far behind? Oh my God, we're yeah, two, it looks like it. I'm we're two hours behind. behind on donations. Oh my yeah, we God. got a lot that came in. I'm so. going to let them they all just going keep going. to rolling. hire you now. Lol. But I appreciate you keeping it 100 with us fans and not kissing A's ass to be in their good graces. You yeah. don't need them. You make thousands of people's lives better every week with your commentary. Thank you, TJ Jones, after I shit on you. I love you, TJ, though. You know that. But also, I made a mistake. TJ was giving me four different matches with Christian, and I read it like it was a six-man match or something. So I'm sorry. I'm a dumb fucking idiot, which we all know. But um, I am stupid. But no, so you're right. I, I will look those matches up later. I'll come back to you with my... I'm really going to watch them. I'm dead serious. I don't remember them. So I'm going to go watch them all, and I'm going to come back to you with my feedback, uh, TJ. So look for that. And um, we will catch up with these. Did donors. you just donate to Joe? Did you just donate to Joe? Thank you for the donation. And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself in the bunghole. <laughs> it's JD Venom. <laughs> Remember back between 2007, 2009, TNA every other week would build up their shows as the biggest show in Impact history and it ends in some type of screw job finish with Jarrett winning. Or the mm. biggest signing in TNA history and it turns out Orlando Jordan. Yeah, I remember that. Then Orlando Jordan would really just go on to be a commentator. <laughs> like he really didn't do much. He... Yeah, that's all they had at that point. JD Venom, thank you, man. For the $7. Actually, Jordan was pretty good on commentary. I mean, nothing crazy, but he was... I don't know, he was kind of fun on commentary, and I thought he looked good in the ring, too. I always Don't remember... Gino? Don't mind if I do! Thinking he could have done What's more. What's my name? Dunkachino! It's a whole new game! Dunkachino! You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate, chocolate blend. Even Piers Morgan is crapping on this show. <laughs> is he really? Branulus, thanks for the $5. Is Piers Morgan really crapping on this? That's a weird thing to say. And a weird thing. Maybe, oh, maybe because the guy that donated under Fox News sucks or whatever. <laughs> maybe that's it. Ed's View says, Sup, Jake and Joe, I'm disappointed overall. The plus side, we're probably going to get to see more Eddie Kingston material. Yeah, I agree, man. And John Wills earlier dropped $50. We, we played that already, but I, thank you guys for those donations, man. Shit bomb! Ending was May Young birthing a hand level of bad. Yeah, <laughs> it was weird, man. It's funny how you can get two different ends of that spectrum with wrestling. You know, like, like Mae Young, what, you get her put through a table by the Dudley Boys, awesome. You get her birthing a hand, awful, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pico. Much appreciated, brother. Hell yeah. Um, Joe is thinking of the Pope, I think. I am. I'm thinking of Elijah. What was, wasn't he Elijah Burke and then he was the Pope? Or, or am I mixing up all different people that look similar? I couldn't even tell I you. I was thinking of the Pope. I like Pope. I think you were, but. I'm thinking of somebody else. Uh, uh, Orlando kind of Jordan is a knowledge. different it's a different guy Orlando Jordan's a different guy yeah I was thinking of uh, whatever Pope's name was in WWE what was Pope's name in WWE Pope was great I was thinking of Pope I'm glad you said that because you totally you nailed exactly who I thought I was talking about you're right Elijah Burke yeah 
It was Elijah Burke. Okay, so he's Elijah. Yeah. I was thinking his name was Jordan in WWE, so that was Pope. But no, Pope was yeah, Elijah Burke. Yeah, Orlando Jordan. I, My bad. There you go. Like I said, I didn't... I didn't Joe mixing up black people. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Well, uh, if, then if, we have speaking of black, you know, not many of them scam, are getting Larry hired Warren by these companies, are they? <laughs> Scorpio Sky is going to take on Darby Allen, who has to defend the title, or he's stripped of the title. So if he doesn't defend it this Wednesday, which I, it's kind of weird, they set that up with that stipulation in mind, and then he does the elbow drop through the scaffolding, and we didn't see him again past that. So will he be able to defend the title? Won't he? And then, obviously, Wednesday, we have the War Council with the Inner Circle. They're going to discuss what's next because Jericho and MJF both say changes need to be made. We'll see what happens. I love Pope. But that's all we know for Wednesday, so. Well. Dunkachino? Don't mind if I do. Red Comet what's Man. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Now we're one hour behind. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate, chocolate blend. blend. That brass ring look like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Bling. Dude, fuck. Dude, Finn was coming in and out tonight because he's still kind of off sleeping from being sick. And I was like, man, if he comes in the ring during this, he's going to be like, oh, Sonic ring. I want to get a Sonic <laughs> Or it looked like a giant donut like here on uh, Pacino's fucking shirt. Look at that. There's a, there's a <laughs> ring. Boom. There's a whole bunch of them. I didn't get to make it. Somebody already. I was going to do that earlier. That's why I didn't say it live. But somebody beat me to it. Oh, everyone. One of my dude. favorites is Marvin the Martian. Sonic's up there grabbing it. Oh, yeah. I love Shit Marvin bomb. the Martian. Where's the kaboom? Even though the show sucked, it was still better than watching Raw, and that says a lot. Firebird. Um, yes, this was still better than watching Raw. I I agree with you, because I still give this show tonight a five out of ten, and that's still better than Raw. And also, it was, it was, I could actually rage about the show. You know what I'm saying? So, you still have passion. Yeah. yeah you raw, still care. You're, you're, you're angry, but it's because we care. I'm that's, passionate. That's coming down I, I feel like I see the obvious answers to things. So, like, I'm, I'm like lit up because I feel it like. It feels like when we used to get mad when Daniel Bryan was trying to. Yes. You know, be Don't taken to the next Gino? level. Few Don't people mind like if that. I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate, chocolate blend. Tony is usually very apologetic about this kind of stuff. I have a feeling you will make it right. I don't know how, but he will. Yeah, I don't think he's going to say much about it now because he's he's well, trying we said, to. He said a lot about it so far. Okay, he's well, been talking. He's been saying how uh, that um, they're going to go ahead and upload the video of Moxley saying that Kenny can't build a ring to explode worth a shit. And he's he, he kind of played down to the fans saying, like, I don't know what you guys expected outside. We weren't actually going to blow somebody up. That's how you sold it, you motherfucker. Yeah, That's he, exactly what you said. You should stay away from I'm that. I'm not mad that it was Christian. We know he is going to be great for Ryu. I'm just mad that they hyped this shit out of it. To yeah. be fucking Christian. Yeah. What was the point of the high big show? Sh Max Caster used to be a wrestler on Grimm's toy show. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, Pacharo, hey, thank you. Good that you know he got a start in Grimm's and made it somewhere. So yeah, I, I, I like the acclaim. I don't I even like their silly rapping stuff. It's kind of grown on me, honestly. Yeah, I like. A lot uh, of people uh, don't care uh, for it. I like it. I actually so like I'm that guy. Yeah, I like that guy too. I think he's I good. like Max Caster. And, I'm and more excited. That. I'd rather see him than Ethan Page at this point. I mean, That's what I'm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't dislike Ethan Page. Just he's not someone that I'm. I'm personally excited for. So he was fine though. His debut is exactly as it should be. He it did wasn't a good job. It wasn't Dunkachino. Yeah, it was don't fine. Don't mind if I it do. Wasn't bad. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. I'm just surprised they didn't have I change almost his name. would have liked the street fight, but they ruined it with the commentary over top. Yeah, the commentary was just weird to me. I couldn't figure out what it was. I wish I would. I always wish I was commentating because I'm like, I know how I would call this, and what they did wasn't good. Um, the set. Uh, was it the the CD? The CD? Am I saying your name wrong, man? I'm sorry. I don't know what. what I'm just trying to think of what that word that is. Or, seed. Well, but if I knew what country or whatever that name comes from, I I could probably yeah, deceit. It could be deceit. That's what shit it bomb it depends on the country. Breaking shots fired by Bar. Look at his tweet. 
Uh, shots fired by T-Bar. Oh, yeah, Jeff Rowe da boss. What up, Jeff Rowe da boss? Holy shit. How you been, man? And thanks to everybody who joined us for Corrupted Podcast last night. We had a fucking hilarious time. And I hope you guys check out Corrupted. It's up on Patreon. If you didn't watch last night, we had a blast and a good time. And there was a lot of funny shit. Rojas is on fire on that show. And uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, Luke was hilarious. So, Oh, my God, he, bro. He did, he did a really good job. That Harry Potter shit yeah, killed me, me. No, that was that was classic. Dobby wants to up. kill Mr. Potter with his wand. I was so glad you put that up. <laughs> Something wrong with so me. So funny. We're yeah, going bomb. back to look at the boneyard. There's no commentary for that. They should have tried to get Bully Ray in the ladder match. Uh, Hail Metal Forever says they should try to get Bully Ray in the ladder match. I mean, I don't know. For a one-off tonight, for a pay-per-view, that probably wouldn't have been a bad idea, but not in a ladder match that has to be for like a, a mid-card title. You know, it just I don't think that. I mean, it's really going to get TNA in here in a minute. I mean, stop. Yeah. Stop it. I, I'm, I'm not. Maybe for, like I said, one night if you wanted to really build something, I don't, but there would have he, to be like a really want to wrestle? told story and reason for it. So I love Bully Ray. The character Bully Ray, man, he's a great. That guy is legit scary. I mean, I know. <laughs> yeah, in real life. We're only a few steps away from bringing Duncan back Asian Don't point, mind so. if I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. The ending of AU was trashy. It could have done without Christian Okada would be a lot better. Three tenths. Three out of ten from E Murder. Damn. Yeah. I mean, I'm in a I've seen that quite a few times in the chat. So. I, I bumped up my four to like a five or something. Like I don't know. But I'm at a four point five. Uh, Seth Negan said, "Why have a wrestling ring and a street fight in an abandoned warehouse?" That doesn't even bother me. Like Matt Hardy has the ring in his yard. Yeah. We've seen it in swamps. We've seen it. You know that that's not even an issue that I have with any of this. You can have better a ring than in a the warehouse. swamp fight. That's better than the swamp fight. Yeah, that swamp fight was to me the worst thing for cinematic matches. I really feel like was the Money in the Bank match because that could have been so special, and I felt like they they fudged that up so royally. Yeah, like it was like they that sort one, of had a. Good... They had so many options for that being in Titan Towers, you know, in WWE headquarters. They could have done so many incredible things, and then throwing people off the roof like they were dead, but they're back the next day. All of it. Who won the match? How Oscar won? How Otis won? Forget it. Oh yeah, Sean Ross Sapp is on AEW's payroll. He has to be. He's going. Yeah, on he's a on. scumbag. But, but the psycho. boneyard match had no commentary, and you heard AJ, and then the Undertaker, you know, snap back and reply to AJ, and AJ would say something. And Undertaker would be like, "Come on, boy," you know, and it would get. It, it was good because it made. That's what you needed from Sting and Ricky Starks, and you needed Brian Cage and Darby to be just attacking each other verbally as well as physically. Hearing the commentary try and sell it, Taz never once sounded scared or threatened. He just. It's not that he's usually a better actor. But seeing that his his whole team is destroyed, he acted like, "Well, shit, that's unfortunate. I gotta get out of here now because the main event's coming." But that stinks. Too Ugh. bad. There's another day. He didn't act angry and really like uh, upset that his team lost. He just didn't feel convincing to me. And Taz is usually much better than that. I think Taz was not good at, either. I never, know, I've never, I've never, emotional. I've never really liked him. On comments, I, I I've seen him act emotional before. I mean, he's even done stuff on Dynamite that sounded better than this. This was I I just don't think this was good, and they did not need commentary in this street fight. It just it took away from the match. There was no need for it. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sticking with a four point five. I feel comfortable with that. I might go four or five. Yeah, I'm five. Sounds too good. But I don't want to go lower than like a raw because it was better, but it wasn't. It was, oh my God, dude. I, it's I, also I, funny because this is oh a my God. review scale. I'm gonna leave Heidi, this salami. Right here. <laughs> I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Uh, 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 I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch! Run, you fucking fat bitch! Don't you think I'm a fucking terrorist? Run, you fat bitch! Oh, run, you fat bitch! Heidi in the house. Run, 
run, you fat, fat bitch. I was only able to watch the pre-show. What is with these super tiny Asian broads? Not only do they have sideways vaginas but they can't even wait before their opponent's arm is fully extended to start running on an Irish whip. So wow. So hokey looking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't believe Heidi is a savage. That's horrific. Heidi. <laughs> My God. Thank you for the donation though, Heidi. Much appreciated. Although, I don't know. I mean, I, Holy like, hell. I don't want to hide that salami. Yeah. Look out. That's, well, you know, man. You know the Middle Eastern people. They don't like the Asian people. Can't you know? argue with that fact. Oh boy, what a mess of a night, brother! What really a fucking was. mess. I mean, I, I know I sounded pessimistic towards the the exploding barbed wire match, but this is what I was expecting—some type of fantastic failure. And then once they got into it more, I got hooked into it. You know, hook, line, and sinker. Well, because they got me with with Kenny Omega concocting some type of cool trap. Do you realize we were both the, right, the, the Jake? Stage. We we're both right, Jake. Do you realize that? Yeah. Because in yeah. my, I, I said this would be the probably the best thing of the night or the most interesting thing of the night, and I couldn't wait for this. This is going to be the yeah. big thing. Obviously, it's a main event, but you know, then you said like there was all. It just seems ridiculous, and it was all these room for failure and stuff like that. And literally, what happened was the bar was set so low. Yeah. So it, many piss poor matches and bad outcomes. That and it was the best surprises. thing. To me, this was the best thing of the night, in a way. Um, you could argue... Because the first... Up until they played the alarm, I feel like they had a pretty solid match. Like Going on, it, yeah. They, things were going they, on. They were selling very well and building tension. Up until, like, the first pyro hit, they had everything going their way. And then you, you see, you know, weapons coming in, and then finally you, you get the, the pyro go off, and that's when it really started to, to fall apart. But Kiss him. Kiss him, Kingston. Well, listen, man, we got to get out of here, I, I suppose. Um, it's been a long review. Um, I, I'm out of rage. I have no more rage left in my body. Maybe tomorrow we can go back and kind of rewatch this in, in a few parts. Yeah, there, maybe. While I'll... you look at some Christian stuff. In our own city, in Philly, we're gritty. Yo, this whole city, we're gritty. Yo, we might eat our own shitty. Yeah. Fade to black tipped eight dollars. SRS is a cuck though. I love how he says he doesn't want <laughs> to get involved as a wrestler, but he's always trying to suck different companies' cocks to be part of the show. It's oh, embarrassing seeing him suck off air you so hard. Dude is a scumbag, two-faced fraud. Listen, I can tell you from personal experience, that guy literally looks down on people and is a terrible person. I'm a loudmouth. I'm a loudmouth who says terrible things out loud and makes jokes, and I'm loud, and I'm annoying, and I'm like an angry dog or something. That's me. You know, I make mistakes and stuff like that. I do. But let me tell you, man, that guy is a sick, weirdo person. Like... Solomonster, wonderful person. Literally, Incredible human being. Solomonster, a beautiful fucking human being. A smart guy, great voice. I'm putting him over. He's a he's yeah. literally a rival of mine. Incredibly anyway. knowledgeable and, and just very, beautiful very, person. very down to earth. Steven Larson, sweethearts. Like other news reporters, uh, Wrestling Inc. and um, Raj Giri, wonderful person. Okay? Sean Ross Sapp. A scumbag, awful person. Sorry, we've like, heard a lot of things throughout the years that have been. He's a little, sub, he's know, a little jerk off. He's a little sniveling jerk off type of guy who like makes. He's just a he's that he's that mother dude. He's the worst type of passive aggressive, weird fuck. Okay, I'd rather be trapped in an elevator with fucking JD than fucking have to take a phone call with fucking Cyclops over there. So let me just tell you, that guy, S what well, you just said, you're not wrong. That guy's a fucking weird person. You know what I mean? Uh, he's he's at Ryback type of levels, you know that sort of thing. But Ryback's like more obviously a douche. But that guy is really. I mean, I'm telling you, man, 
there, there's even some people that I don't like, but I'll say that they're pretty good people. I'm just an asshole. But though, but him, no. This guy is a sniveling fucking dick licker. Okay, this guy's a pickle licking dick sniffer. All right, the fact that probably Cornette has me blocked and not that guy is disgusting to me. Like I want to throw up on somebody. Jake, last comments before we get the fuck out of here. Honestly, I, I I'm just I, I I agree with what Seth Negan said about before too. Like you know, Diamante and Ivelisse, those are veterans that you could be having the, your women's division built around. Essentially, they don't even have to be your top talent. It's just that they're veterans, so they can shape and and help build everyone else and elevate them. We've seen them put on some great you know matches before in the ring. We saw one issue from I think it was what Ivelisse a while back or Diamante, one of the two, but. That was apparently a lot of uh, problems, you know, in personal life. People have bad days. Still, uh, the women's stuff baffles me, and it really seems like it, it comes to Kenny's booking and favoritism right. towards the New Japan women, you know, or any any of the Japanese wrestlers. He really favors Riho and, and everyone of the like, so they get a chance, and the rest doesn't. So it, it's just the whole thing is is very disheartening and this night could have been so much better but it wasn't sadly that's what it comes down to we got a very lackluster pay-per-view this could have been great it wasn't and now we know you know double or nothing is coming soon hopefully that next pay-per-view in may will be much better we'll see what happens though and it's going to be at daily's place again it's not going to be in las vegas like they wanted double or nothing 2021 will be taking place from daily's place and do we have an exact date? May 30th, 2021. So, All right. There it is, boys and girls. We're out of here. We'll see you tomorrow night and for the... That's a, sa- that's a Sunday as well. So not a Saturday night. People want them to go back to Saturday nights instead of Sundays, but that's a Sunday at pay-per-view as well. Yeah, so they're going to Sundays. It's not just because of UFC like we thought, unless it is too. They had said it was because of they didn't want to go against UFC. They wanted to go ahead, and, and Tony said he would be back on Saturdays of, again, but... Mm-hmm. Well, Tony I said guess. a lot of stuff, apparently, that just yeah, I know. isn't happening or whatever. Um, all right, man, we're out of here. Monday Night Raw tomorrow what night. What about me, Joe? Justin Labar, what about me, Joe? What up, Justin? Um, Justin Labar, I can't stand him, and I like to shit on him. I like to shit on you, Justin, and I, I don't really... I don't. Something about you irritates me, but I think you're a good person and a smart guy. I just think that I'm an asshole. So I don't think it's you. I think if you called me up and said, "Hey, what's up? Let's talk and stuff." I think like I'd be friends with you. But I, but there's a part of me, Justin, that thinks I just don't. I think I think you're kind of like Sean a little bit. You're a little bit like I'm the shit, and you guys are all stupid. Like that's I feel that you feel that way. But also it could just be me. So with you, I'm not really sure. I think I think hey, I just to like be perfectly honest, Joe. What you 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 went ahead and, and you you, you kind of hit something there because I, to, for me and I don't know if maybe this played into it with you but Justin Labar got ruined for me by by JD and that's an honest fact because he was so obsessed with him and and spoke about him incessantly everything was Labar this Labar that chair shot reality Labar 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 that it became like Christ I don't want to hear about him anymore yeah so. dude shut the fuck up already it's like what yeah. the fuck yeah I remember that um and then I met and I turned out that I'm like dude what we're better than this like what the fuck who gives a shit. Um, no, but I, I like I like Labar. I do like him. I think I just like to shit on him because like, I think it's just, like it's just like I, I want to. I think in the past, you know, we try to do things and like he just seems like he puts cold shoulder. So I got the butt hurt. So with him, yeah, I think he's actually a good guy. I think he actually really is a good guy. I think I just like fucking with him. So it's actually me. In the case of who's the dickhead, I'm the dickhead when it comes to him, and I'll admit it. Um, goodbye, uh, Jake. See you tomorrow night, Monday night Raw review. We'll see you for the raw review. Stay sexy, everybody. Well, at night. Countdown ended on Twitter if you want to get a hold of Jake. I'm at JCS Commentary on uh, Twitter if you want to get a hold of me. And there's Eddie Kingston making out with his boyfriend, John Moxley. Everybody, good night. And we love you so much. We'll see you tomorrow night for Raw Review.
the fuck was that? <laughs>